on same-sex nuptials and then stay their rulings pending challenges to higher courts. Adams County District Judge C. Scott Crabtree said in his decision that Colorado's prohibition approved by voters in 2006 conflicted with the fundamental right to marry. Crabtree wrote, The court rejects the state's attempt to too narrowly describe the marital right at issue to the right to marry a person of the same sex. There are 19 states plus the District of Columbia where same-sex marriage is now legal. Several other same-sex marriage lawsuits are moving towards the U.S. Supreme Court. Two other lawsuits testing bans in Oklahoma and Virginia have already been heard by appeals courts. The Attorney General of neighboring Utah said on Wednesday he would appeal directly to the U.S. Supreme Court, a ruling by a federal appeals court last month that backed gay marriage there. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Israel continues to escalate airstrikes against the Gaza Strip, with officials reporting 400 strikes in the last 48 hours, and the attacks leaving at least 49 dead and over 450 others wounded. The split between Hamas fighters and civilians remains unclear in the chaos of the Gaza attacks, but at least 12 children have been confirmed killed on Wednesday. Most of the missiles hit residential areas, destroying over 50 homes and damaging over 1,700 others. That's just the beginning, according to Israeli officials, who bragged about hitting more targets in 48 hours than they did in the whole week-long November 2012 clash. Outgoing President Shimon Peres confirmed an imminent ground invasion as Israel continues to mass troops and tanks along the Gaza border, saying it will happen quite soon and that it's the logical conclusion to the current conflict with Hamas. Arab nations are pushing for an emergency UN Security Council meeting to try to secure a ceasefire, though with the United States praising the Israeli onslaught, it seems likely that any UN measures to stop the fighting will come only after Israel has tired itself of pounding the tiny strip. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. At work, at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table. It smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype as well. You can Skype on into our show at username lrn.fm, so feel free to do that. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Lauren Objectivist Girl. <laughs> and Mark. And, of course, we'll take your calls about anything. I actually want to start the show out with the uh, news story I teased all last night. We never got to it because our phones were just... Uh, busy, busy all night long, and of course that's the way we like it here on Free Talk Live. The story from the Washington Post, Manassas. Manassas City. I don't know where that is. It's got to be near D.C., though, I think. I believe it is. Uh, Manassas City teenager accused of sexting a video to his girlfriend is now facing a search warrant in which Manassas City police and Prince William County prosecutors want to take a photo of his erect penis, <laughs> possibly forcing the teen to become erect by taking him to a hospital and giving him an injection. Possibly. 
according to the teen's <laughs> lawyers. Oh, my God. They have some other plan, and if that doesn't work, uh, they're going to take him to the hospital. At least make it enjoyable. At least right. give him a nice nudie magazine or something. Well, buy him a subscription <laughs> to Hustler.com. Apparently, according to the top story uh, on freetalklive.com, yes. Hustler.com is now taking... Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Dogecoin for access to their website. So they could give them some nice Bitcoin and help this teenager get aroused the right way. <laughs> the teen is faced with well, scat so gross. Well, the, 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 really, <laughs> the really interesting part about this story is that he's in trouble for sexting, which is a relatively popular thing from what I understand among young oh, yeah. people. Um, and, you know, in some cases, we've seen cases where teenagers are being charged with child pornography for taking a nude picture of themselves, not even necessarily, you know, a sexual picture. Because, again, to, nudity isn't by its nature sexual. You could do sexual things while you're nude. You could do sexual things while you're not nude. But anyway, well, um, now mean, they want to take a picture of his penis, which is technically the police taking child pornography by their own definition. Okay, so I don't can't think of I didn't pay that much attention to the news when I was in high school, but I can assure you that we we may not have had sexting, we did have Polaroids. Yeah. Um the Polaroids, you know, now and then would get passed around, that kind of thing. You know, maybe somebody it's a broke felony, up. Sir. Uh felony. whatever. I never heard of anybody under the age of 18 being charged with a felony for having a Polaroid of somebody else under the age of 18. That's because the Polaroids probably didn't spread far enough, and odds are good when it went to the principal's office, it probably stopped at the principal's office. Now you've got the, the school administrators calling in the police. Uh, they've got the police on campus now, which they may not have had when you were growing uh, up, They Mark. certainly had them on campus, but... Uh, you so know. you had the, the school resource officer sure. guys? Um, so anyway, let me continue with your uh, with the story here. The prosecutor's job is to seek justice, said the de- teen's defense lawyer. Well, too late for that. What is just about this? They asked. How does this advance the interest of the Commonwealth? The teen is facing two felony charges for possession of child pornography and manufacturing child pornography, which could lead not only to incarceration until he's 21, but inclusion on the state's sex offender database for possibly the rest of his life. David Culver of NBC Washington first reported the story and interviewed the teen's guardian, his aunt, who was shocked at the lengths Prince William authorities were willing to go to to make a sexting case in juvenile court. His attorney pointed out, uh, Jessica Harbor Fost, uh, Harbson Foster says, This is a 17-year-old who goes to school every day, plays football, has never been in trouble with the law before. Now he's saddled with two felonies and the implication that he's a sexual predator. His girlfriend, by the way, was 15. I don't mind trying the case, she says. My goal is to stop the search warrant. I don't want him to go through that. Taking him down to the hospital so he can get an erection in front of all those cops, that's traumatizing. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is, um, I mean, now 17 and 15 is the stretch here. Now, I'd like to point out that it's not two years, necessarily. He could have just turned 17, and she could yeah. be ready to just turn 16. I had this situation with a with a girlfriend when I was in high school, and she was about, she was a year and a half younger than I am. I was 17, she was 15. And, you know, it didn't feel weird or strange. She was in, she was one class beneath me. I was a junior, she was a sophomore. That doesn't seem very strange to me. There were situations where, uh, you know, freshmen were dating seniors. If you don't want freshmen to date seniors, you shouldn't put them in the same school with them. Agreed. Well, the funny thing is, the girl wasn't charged in this case, and certainly there have been cases where the if females she was have older, been charged. She could have been, but oh, it, she could have been charged anyway. This is an easy layup for them. You know, now they have an older male and mm-hmm. a younger female, and that's their favorite little setup because he's clearly a predator. Manassas City Police Spokes Bureaucrat Adrian Helm said the department would not comment, and Detective David Abbott, the lead investigator, didn't return a call seeking comment. No one except a Prince William magistrate has seen the affidavit and search warrant for the photos. They aren't made public until after they're served and then returned to the courthouse. The Post is not naming the teen defendant. Foster said the case began with the teen's 15-year-old girlfriend sent photos of herself to the 17-year-old, who in turn sent her the video in question. Now, we don't have details on exactly what the content of that video was, but I imagine it involved his penis. Presumably an erect uh, penis, because that's what the police are looking for, is photos of his erect penis, I'm going to guess, either to trade around the department or to compare to the uh, the video that was... Or both. I, you know, I don't think many young men are going to send... It- 
not erect penises. Right. Right. I doubt that very seriously. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I mean, you know, this is a situation where they're getting child porn in order to prevent child porn. This is no, no, no. They're manufacturing child yeah, pornography, manufacturing. which is what they charged him with. That's crazy. But it's okay when they do it because they're the professionals. It's okay. The police can totally look at uh, teenage genitalia, and that's okay. I would go ha so far as to say the only pe <laughs> the, the the only trauma to anyone's psyche that occurred was when the police found out about this. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, maybe they were just jealous. I, I don't. I, I don't. You know. No. This is this is stupid people that have gone the taken the law too far. You never know, Mark. There are some pretty kinky fetishes out there. Maybe there this be. guy really likes it. There could be. <laughs> the girl has not been charged. Her mother filed a complaint about the boy's video. Said Foster. That's right. the defense it's, attorney. You know, the mother of the poor little waif that uh, sent him nudie pictures to begin First, with. Yeah. Um. Has she's uh, so decided... innocent. She would never ever <laughs> do anything like that. Clearly. <laughs> the male teen was served with petitions from juvenile court. I think there's court. nothing wrong with her taking pictures of herself so and either. sending them. Or him. I just want to make it abundantly clear that, you know, there's two are tang in fact, tangoing here. Not yeah. that it takes two to tango. Which, you know, I don't want her charged, and I don't want him charged. This should be a private matter between them and their parents. If, you know, if there's some sort of issue here, let the families hash it out. This is ridiculous that anything like this goes any further than, you know, a personal dispute. Uh, going on with the story here, the male was served petitions but not arrested in early February from juvenile court. When the case went to trial in juvenile court in June, Foster said prosecutors forgot to certify the teen was a juvenile. The case was dismissed, but police immediately obtained new charges and also a search warrant for his home. Police arrested the teen then and took him to juvenile jail, where Foster said they took photos of the teen's genitals against his will. So they already have apparently flaccid uh, photos of this teen's penis, but now they want to complete their collection and... And, uh, and get uh, erect photos. The case was set for trial on July 1st, where Foster said Assistant Commonwealth Attorney Claiborne Richardson told her that the uh, client must either plead guilty or police would obtain another search warrant for pictures of his erect penis for comparison to the evidence from the teen's cell phone. Foster asked how that... I wonder how many cops they're going to need to uh, eyeball that video. Lots. Uh, Foster asked how that would get, uh, be accomplished and was told that we'll just take him down to the hospital, give him a shot, and then take the pictures that we need. The teen declined to plead guilty. Foster said the prosecutor then requested a continuance so police could get a search warrant, which was granted by substitute juvenile court judge Jan Rolst Anol. Two days later, both sides were back in court. Foster filed a motion to allow her client to travel out of state to visit family, and Richardson wanted the teen to comply with the search warrant before he left. Juvenile court judge Lisa Baird declined to order that and allowed the teen to leave Are the area. Are they afraid that he's going to get some kind of plastic surgery I don't and know. his junk before? I mean, yeah, this... I, I mean, if I were him, I would take this opportunity <laughs> to get a larger penis. Yeah, those things don't really work, <laughs> Lauren. I don't. From what I heard, uh, I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd be no, in no interest to, in that particular thing. But this is crazy. There's she no did doubt. allow him to leave, by the way, and he has another court date coming up in five days from today, uh, July 15th. We will continue. There's a little bit more to the story. want to hear your thoughts on this. Is this guy a criminal? Should he be being charged with child pornography? And do you support the police in their mission? to acquire photos of his erect penis. And it's just for evidence purposes, of course. 855-453, that's the toll-free number here. You can take control. This is Free Talk Live. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915. 2955 for your free 10 minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1 800 915 2955. That's 1 800 915 2955. 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More about the Manassas police who they want to punish a teenage sex offender, uh, alleged, uh, for apparently taking a video of his own uh, erect penis by getting a search warrant to take pictures of his erect penis and then possibly put him in prison for several years of his life because he wanted to send something to his girlfriend, who was 15 at the time. She also had taken naked pictures of herself, but yet she hasn't been charged. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts certainly welcome. We continue in moments. Oh, sorry about that, Mark. You can turn on my microphone, please. Thank you very much. The North American Bitcoin Conference is going on July the 19th and 20th, but I'm sad to report that Free Talk Live won't be going. Uh, There was some communication difficulties on price uh, with uh, the North American Bitcoin Conference, and they just couldn't rectify it with their budget. Uh, We, you know, we had an agreement. We were going, and then, you know, it sort of fell through. We're still the media sponsor of the event. But um, if you were going to see Free Talk Live, there, best I can tell, um, I have uh, asked for, but I haven't gotten a response. I suspect it won't be a problem. Um, refunds available for anybody who 
wants it, that that's the reason you were going. Mm, okay. um, there's still going to be lots of people. Hopefully that wasn't the reason you were going, but it would have been nice if you were. Oh, well, it'd be nice to Gosh, see, see anybody who came to see us. There's yeah. no doubt about it. There's lots of people who are con- going to be there. Kathy Reisenwitz, uh, Tony Gallippi, Roger Veer, Charlie Lee, Jeff Berwick. Roger's not going to be there. Oh, you're right. I've got to remove that from my oh, copy, Jeff's too. Jeff's going, huh? Roger can't make it. He's got uh, an issue with a passport, I believe it is, or a visa. One of those things. Visa, I think it is. Some kind of permission slip thing. Lots of Bitcoin folks will be there, however, yes. and this is kind of what happens with speakers. You know, some can make it, some, some come, can't. Some don't, yeah. And uh, Free Talk Live can't. But you can get your tickets at btcchicago.com and pay in Bitcoin if you wish. July 19th and 20th, Chicago's McCormick Place South Building, btcchicago.com. Okay, toll free number 855 450 free. We'll continue. There's a little bit more to the story. Uh, A little bit more to the story here at uh, WashingtonPost.com. Prince William County Commonwealth Attorney Paul Ebert says the police told him these allegations by the lawyers lack credibility. Uh, Apparently the teen declined to plead guilty. We're talking about the teenage boy, 17, a young man, a teenage uh, male who has uh, taken a video of himself naked, maybe uh, with an erect penis. The police now have filed a search warrant and has been granted by the judge to have the police force this young man to take some sort of a shot, uh, which would result in an erection, and then the police would then photograph him, which, of course, if anybody else does something like that, that's called manufacturing child pornography. Now, I'd like to point out that I don't think this guy is a child, and so I don't think that should be child pornography, so I think that the law needs to change on this because he's not the only teenager who's facing charges like this. It's not uncommon for this at all. Well, they've got a real problem here. Because there's, you know, there, there, there's laws in these here United States, and those laws are that uh, you can't have sex before the age of 16 or 18, depending mm-hmm. on which, uh, uh, you know, place you are in, which state you're in, and you can't have a take a picture of your nakedness in any sort of prurient fashion um, before your 18th birthday, or somebody else can't do it either. So now you've got this problem, A, that people who are legally allowed to have sex in some states aren't allowed to take pictures of themselves Uh having sex. That's confusing. And if you lower these ages, look, um, as far as I'm concerned, if a person should be a a person should be allowed to have sex, uh, you know, at whatever age they're allowed to have sex and they should be able to take pictures if that's what they want to do. And they should be able to share them with their partner if that's what they wish to do. But if they just sort of mess this up, then you'll have this whole sort of black market porn industry, the below 18 porn industry that's going to crop up. And, uh, you know, even if it'll be amateur, likely, but there'll be a huge demand for it. And this is a problem that's very difficult to solve. I'm not claiming that this kid deserves to be in jail. I think just the opposite. But the the authorities do see a difficulty with this, and for good reason, because if they don't come up with some solution to this problem, then there are going to be six, 17-year-old young men taking pictures and video of ha- them having sex with their 16-year-old um, you know, girlfriends, and wham, you've got this uh, new amateur porn industry that's going to be overnight. Yeah, I think our society, though, has a really big issue with how they view sex. Um, I oh, think yeah. I think it's become extremely stigmatized. It's actually I just did an Independence Day video and it went over how we lost our freedom in like the early years, like the 17th and 18th uh, century. And so what's interesting is if you look at it, um, we actually had um, the brothels were actually one of the biggest industries in our country. It held up our economy to start off with in America. And then the founding fathers helped stigmatize sex. And ever since then, it's gone down the drain all the way up to like the Westboro Baptist Church, which is, you know, crazy when it comes to when it's So the founding fathers were stigmatizing sex? They were. Some of them. Yeah. Because I was going to say some of them were pretty horny, weren't they? I mean, Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, but like John Adams hated, hated sex. Wow. I will didn't hate sex, but um, he tried to help stigmatize it. What about Abigail felt about and that? And then, of course, we've got <laughs> Alexander Hamilton that's trying to um, 
trying to get rid of alcohol as well in the Federalist Papers. So Alexander Hamilton was one of the very first uh, freedom terrorists in our country. He certainly was. Carlos Flores Laboy, appointed as the teen's guardian ad litem in the case, said he thought it was just as illegal for the Manassas City Police to create their own child pornography as to investigate the teen for it, saying, quote, they're using a statute that was designed to protect children from being exploited in a sexual manner. To take By a adults. Picture, to take a picture <laughs> of this young man in a sexually explicit manner, this irony is incredible. He he said and added, as a parent myself, I was floored. It's child abuse. We're wasting thousands of dollars in resources and man hours on a sexting case. That's what we're doing. Foster said Detective Abbott told her that after obtaining photos of the teen's erect penis, he would use special software to compare pictures of this penis to this penis. Who does this? It's just crazy, <laughs> she said. Who does it indeed? Th there's some... Um... I was going to say something. Yes, the irony <laughs> is uh, the irony is quite thick here, especially considering the intention. Remember, when a law is written, there's an intention for the law, and then there's what actually happens with the enforcement of the law. So, with the intention of the child pornography laws, the idea was the child pornography laws are supposed to somehow protect children from being abused, being forced into sexual positions and sexual circumstances, and being photographed or videotaped in those circumstances, usually by an adult. That's yeah. the kind of the classic definition of child pornography, which, of course, doesn't at all apply to two teenagers consensually taking photographs of each other or a sexual situation or whatever, uh, whatever their deal is. Well, but, of course, the law says teenagers can't consent uh, to doing things like well, that. And I don't so think it's the, rape. Or I don't think the lawmakers whatever. ever s uh, were, were thinking about this when they wrote their about laws. About sexting? No, I certainly not. I don't think they were thinking about uh, kids, young people taking pictures of themselves no, in of these not. situations at all. The reason the child porn laws were written was to prevent adults right. from taking pictures of kids That's what I just said. and selling and making um, you know the money but they're not they're not, not even selling it but just forcing children into, whatever into sexual photos whatever prurient reasons they might do it so that's what's interesting about this is we're just we're talking about two teenagers who are consenting with one another it's the police that are the ones taking classic child porn here they're forcing a 17 year old with a judge's order to submit to a <laughs> shot that will erectify his penis and then they're going to take pictures of it and then look at them compared to the videotape that he allegedly took. It's just yeah, crazy. Yeah, the way they get rid of crime is to commit crime exactly. themselves. Exactly. We'll come back with more. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you?
you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com if you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can take control toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us on our website. Just go to freetalklive.com. You can actually create the content. What you see there on the front page of the site has been submitted by listeners like you. Uh, you just go and submit it through our Reddit-based system. You do have to have a Reddit account. That's free. The Free Talk Live account is free. You link them together in a very quick process. And that makes it easy to submit content over at freetalklive.com. If you want to get some Bitcoins or some Dogecoins or some Litecoins or any of the uh, several other cryptocurrencies, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, I think that pretty much sums them all up, you can go to expresscoin.com. Expresscoin.com makes it fast, inexpensive, completely legal, and it's, it's easy. It's very easy to do. Just go to expresscoin.com. They've got several different options for you. You can use money order, wire, transfer, check. And also you can do it much more quickly by going to making a deposit at a credit union in your town. Now, the credit union has to have shared branching, but if it does have shared branching, you should call ahead. Then you can go there, make a deposit, and you'll get your Bitcoins within 24 hours. It's very fast to get, uh, get your... Are they doing the 24-hour guarantee on the cash? If it's put into a bank account, that's how, how they were doing it before. I'll have to check okay. into it. Yeah, cool. I just uh, wanted to make sure I knew they, there's a changover over there. So I just to that's my that's my understanding. Great. So, um, in in fact, they have great customer service, and they'll get back with you very quickly on these issues. I've put a lot of money through Express Coin and getting some bitcoins. What's that? Last time, uh, the last time they had the cash deposit option back when it was cash into coins, it was a business day. Oh, a 24 hour business day. Yeah, I think you're right. At least one business. It could be as long as a full business day since you put it in. You're right. But it's still a pretty darn fast way to get Bitcoin. It's faster than sending a check, wire, transfer, money order. It sure is. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, Without we'll as much out. risk. Is it, you know, sending a check through the mail could get lost. Whatever. Expresscoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app, Expresscoin.com. Now in Canada. Yeah, and it works too, which is really cool. All right, so a uh, little bit more here. The story coming from the Washington Post. There's an update. After all the publicity around the police seeking a search warrant and getting the search warrant to take photographs of a, uh, a naked 17-year-old young man, they are apparently now saying publicly they will not be serving that search warrant. So huh. the warrant was granted by the judge, but now police are saying that uh, they will be declining to exercise that particular search How long warrant. ago was that update? This was posted today. This update was posted today at 3 o'clock this afternoon. It I'm makes sure. you wonder. I mean, either it's just to get the uh, 
this picture or it's unjust. And it's I think that it just goes to show how very human these, uh, you know, our paladins of justice are. Mm. And uh, this is something that's really important for us to keep in mind is, is clearly the police have either made a mistake by not getting the picture or made a mistake by attempting to get the picture. Right. They mm. did one of two things. And in this circumstance, the police were clearly wrong one way or the other. They were wrong. So. We need to understand um, what the police that were wrong by charging this young man in the first place. You can pick whatever side you want, yep. but nobody, nobody can say they're not wrong for bowing to public opinion in this mm. circumstance. They either they either show that they were wrong in the first place for wanting to get the picture, or they're wrong now for not wanting to get the picture. In either circumstance, they were miscarrying justice and not doing their job, doing the opposite of their jobs. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, the way to solve this problem in the future is to get rid of these uh, child or severely modify the child pornography laws to where people who are taking pictures with consent are not participants in child pornography. If you're a teenager taking a picture for your boyfriend or girlfriend, that should not be a criminal act. No one should be threatened with prison. And I wonder, has anyone who has been charged in a case like this ever not taken the plea deal? I mean, because young this people... This kid isn't? <laughs> well, not yet. Um, not young, yet. young people are... You know, they're not experienced uh, at life in a lot of ways. I took a plea deal. I sure shouldn't have taken. Yeah. And yeah, and usually if you get charged with something, you can't afford an attorney. Well, then those public defenders are almost always going to tell you to take the plea deal. So the pressure is constantly put on you to take the plea deal, especially when you're looking at felony charges. I mean, that's a scary thing. Going to prison for several years. Usually they're going to, you know, they're going to try to scare this kid into taking a deal. They're going to they tell him to do that. They're going to tell him, look, we'll give you a, a misdemeanor charge. We'll break it down from a felony. We'll give you a misdemeanor charge of indecent or lewdness or something like that. Indecent exposure. And you can, uh, you know, six months probation. We, we, you won't even have to sit in jail. How does that sound, kid? And he'll take it. Yep. And most people would take it. And he'll be it. a registered sex offender yeah. for the rest of his They'll life as a result. That. Yeah, that's um, true. That's what's that uh, horrifying guy. about this is that's what they want, is they want to tack somebody on to this uh, sex offender registry for no good reason. So I would love to see somebody uh, not take a plea deal on this, because I think it'd be fascinating to go for jury nullification in a case like this, to get in front of a jury and you know tell these people, look, the law says this, and it's stupid. Uh, I was just wanting to share my picture of myself with my girlfriend. She wanted to share pictures of herself. You guys remember being, te you know, young and having relationships, right? This is an unusual thing, and it certainly shouldn't be a crime. And I'm, of course, juries in a lot of cases will convict when I think they shouldn't. Yeah, on this cases is the, like this, this but, is this is the reason that I really I'm kind of scared of this because all the experience I have with juries is. What you're doing is you're looking for that one person with enough spine yeah. to stand up and say, no, this is not just. That's the best you're looking for, because what you won't get is a bunch of people to get together and say this isn't just. Sadly, oh, yeah. they just don't have it. You know, this is a it's a nation of sheep. Sadly, you know, I think it goes even deeper than this. I really think that our society has deteriorated in its view of the human body um, in many, mm. many ways. And I think that this is just one of them. I mean, the um, standard that they hold women to, the standard they hold men to, standard they hold everybody to and their bodies and the focus on the body, um, just the focus on the body in the first place. I think that this is this is bad philosophy. I think that this is this is the way the society thinks is the problem. It's not even I mean, the legislation is bad, but it started with the way that we we let sex get stigmatized right. back early in America. Like the Puritans, right? And it's so. not even this bad. It's not this bad in Europe. Oh, no, it's much no. more, uh, I mean, they'll show sex on television. Wait, in why Europe, are we right? so uptight? What is this obsession with it's people the keeping Puritanism. their clothes on? It's the Puritanism from the past uh, that you were alluding it's to weird. there. And that, of course, would be the problem. If they stack the jury with a bunch of Puritans, then you're screwed. I can't understand it. That's just it. My mind can't grasp this obsession. Sex is bad, okay? <laughs> I can't well, understand it. It's probably less the Puritans and more the Victorians, but um, I'll let, uh, you know, that's the, the nomenclature that's used these days. You think the Puritans would have been okay with uh, 
teenage sex pictures? I, I don't think we can even talk about, uh, you know, what the Puritans would be okay with. These people thought the devil lived in the woods. <laughs> I mean, I've got nothing to talk about, um, you know, what's going on with that. i got nothing uh, when it comes to that. Let's go to Cindy. She's in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live, Cindy. Yeah, I'm in my car just in case we get disconnected. But right. you know what? Um, when are the parents going to be accountable for their children? I'd like to know. My, this is happening to my girlfriend who, uh, her grandson got arrested for the same thing with his girlfriend. She sent him pictures. He shared them with his friends. He sent them back. The police got involved, went into the house, got his computer <sighs> and got his laptop, got his phone, uh, arrested him, he had to get an attorney, costing everybody thousands of dollars. And what are they doing? Teenage stuff. We did it in yeah. the 60s. and Everybody played kissing games and touched each other. And did. This is absolutely stupid. And to think that we have nothing better to share, you know, with what's going on and, and you know, uh, our soldiers and things like that, that we're worried about some kid that took a picture. First of all, right. these girls are not innocent. You know, they make it sound like it's only the guy, and he was such a bad person. Look at the way these girls dress and talk and kiss, and they and they don't even know where half of their kids are at night. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like it used to be. It's not that way anymore. Cindy, you know? and it, it's a, if you've got more you want to share, I know you've got passion, and I appreciate that. Hang on. We can bring you back here in a moment. Uh, and it's just funny. You know, here we are talking about this. Somebody calls in there in the same situation. This is not it's happening all over the country. criminal charges. I'm telling you. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 that's 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here at 855-450-FREE or join us online at freetalklive.com. There are a lot of ways to get interactive with the show. Go and do that for free. Those other talk show hosts charge you for their websites. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy. And if you care about your online privacy, check out ProXPN, a global virtual private network that actually encrypts your data, meaning before it even leaves your computer, everything you're doing is encrypted so that your internet service provider will no longer be able to snoop on you as as they are currently likely doing, uh, probably logging every website you visit and every search term you enter for, in some cases, as long as five years. You can put a stop to that tonight by going and downloading the software from proxpn.com FTL. There's software available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but you can get it working pretty easily there as well. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Now, when you're ready to upgrade to premium, because there's a free trial account that you can use, but when you're ready for premium, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can connect to, and the ability to privately torrent, plus getting past regionally blocked websites in most countries uh, China apparently has cracked down recently, so there may be some issues. I'm hoping to hear something um, from ProXPN about that. I, I don't know what the status on uh, on that is with China. There's been a, a major Chinese uh, crackdown recently, but most of the time, and we had a we had some comments from TSA George, former former TSA George, now Uber George, says he's tried it in different countries, and for the most part, it works and it's, it works well. Well, I mean, I'm sure that uh, it's one of those situations where you know once the the tyranny escalates its crackdown on the VPNs, and the VPNs have to figure out some way to get around it again. Yeah, right now, basically, China is cracking down on VPNs, period. You, if you're using a VPN in China, you may get shut down randomly. So that's apparently what's happening now. But also, um, ProXPN, is uh, is it the largest or among the largest VPN providers in the I world? I don't know about that, but I do know that the uh, the founder, the CEO, is a Free Talk Live supporter and listener and definitely cares about freedom yeah, and your privacy. Deeply. So ProX, I'm sure they're working on it, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Uh, use code FTL20 to get 20% off the price of that premium account. And when you order the annual plan, it breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. As we continue, we actually lost Cindy uh, there during the break. She dropped off the line, but she was telling us that she knew somebody who is involved in a situation like this with her son, teenage son, in trouble with the law with, you know, possible felony child porn charges for taking pictures, sexting, as it's called, uh, and sending that stuff to other teenagers. And, of course, the big claim about this is that, oh, kids, you shouldn't do sexting because it's going to ruin your life. And I don't know if I believe that. Here's what I want to know. Um I, you know, I, yes, I mean, it's interesting. Will it ruin your life? If enough people have uh, sexted and there's enough uh, pictures out there of them, then it's just normal. Right. At this point, uh, you know, that Representative Wiener or whatever his name is, is uh, he's kind of broken it wide open. Eh, you know, whatever, sexting. I, 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 want, I want to know this from parents. Would you rather your kid send naked, naked pictures um, to their boyfriend or girlfriend that potentially could get out. I would imagine that the vast majority of them really don't go very far. But 
you know, well, they get shared among friends and schools. Among friends, but what about the what's, really bad one? Maybe is like, among enemies, what's too. What's the other option, Mark? MyExGirlfriend.com or something like that. You know, would be really bad. Or would you rather them actually have sex? Which one of these is the one that bothers you the most? Well, I mean, come on. If somebody's sexting, doesn't that mean there's a good chance that they will actually be sexually active? That's really normally the first step towards sex. I don't know which one's first and which one's second. I would think that I would think that if I was going to take pictures with somebody, I've already been sexually intimate with them. But I'm not in this Mm -hmm. generation. I don't, you know, I don't understand a lot of this. I don't understand texting. Lauren, I think is in this generation. You would be a millennial, correct? (laughs) Yeah, because I have personal experience with Mm -hmm. this. Let me tell you, Um, that was sarcasm by the way well, wait you must have come across to sex at some <laughs> I, time i mean i had friends that did it mm-hmm. um i mean i i had in, while you were in high school i've had guys that have sent me pictures um high school age are we talking or yeah th- i mean when i was in high school mm-hmm. or even when i was in college even now like men seem to think that that's did you know did you realize when those guys were sending you those pictures did you realize that this is a felony did you have any idea? No, I just thought it was annoying. Mm-hmm. That's it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Get your penis off my phone. It's like it's like I didn't ask you for that, so please don't send it to me. Yeah. Um, now, if I ask, please do. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I mean, and I I mean, people do it. Some of my friends in long distance relationships um, that helped their relationship. Hmm. And um, what and- about the sharing factor? How much of it was spread around? You know, friends sharing other friends' sects and things like that. I mean, sometimes my girlfriends would be like, hey, check this out and like, you know, show it to me. But they wouldn't mm-hmm. like send they it to me. They wouldn't send it to you. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, thanks for showing me your boyfriend's <laughs> junk. <laughs> Just needed to see that. Never seen one of those before. Mm-hmm. Thanks. All I right. totally wanted to know. <laughs> so you can share your thoughts with us. I, I mean, is there anybody out there who really thinks that the Manassas police in this case, who are you know prosecuting a 17-year-old young man for taking picture, uh, taking a video of himself while erect, uh, if you really think that that is the kind of thing that police should be spending resources on, I really, really want to hear from you. I want to know why you think that when there are murderers, rapists, arsonists, uh, dangerous people out there, thieves. Why you would want the police to spend any amount of time whatsoever on this? Because Jesus will smack you down. If th- that's <laughs> Jesus's problem, right? Like you know, we don't need the police officers to do it. All right, so but they're you- the protectors for <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Some people truly believe that. Let's go to the phones. Benjamin has been waiting patiently in California. You're on Free Talk Live, Benjamin, on Skype. Yeah, I I hate uh, interrupting such a joyful and cheerful topic um i'd like to talk about something more joyous and cheerful okay sure. and that okay. is uh the violence in the middle east that's been going on for centuries if not millennia okay um on on the free talk live facebook page a video was shared uh called this land is mine it's a it's a cartoon set to uh an older song called this land is mine and I watched that like eight times because it's just so great. It's so well done. And it starts with a caveman and goes all the way up until modern era, showing the different groups killing each other back and forth hmm. um, oh. to where we have now. And then it ends um, with the angel of death showing how the angel of death is the true hero of the Old Testament and the current Middle East. Um, that people are just going to be going back and forth until, I guess, that, or kind of the point was they're just going to keep going at it until they all die, I guess. Wait, so death um, is the only end to all the killing? Is that the point? I, I don't I don't know if that was the point, but that was, uh, like, of the video. It's just showing how ev- people have been killing each other there back and forth, claiming uh, that the land is theirs according to God, Yep. And that they will fight until they die, uh, defending what God gave them. So, is this um, the last war in uh, before the angel of death comes, or do they predict another one? Or no, it's just it's just a it's just a funny video. Um, it, it's not making any predictions or commenting who's right or who's wrong or anything. I think the video is actually like a, like about a year old, um, <sighs> which uh, to me speaks to the fact that conflict in the middle east is 
Almost not news not at all. <laughs> it's not. It's not new. Well, uh, first off, I'd like to uh, I'd like to address the conflict in the Middle East part. Conflict anywhere isn't new. Um, right now, Israel is probably you know the the occupied ter- territories of Israel are probably the most disputed pieces of land on the planet. So we have a tendency to sort of focus on them. But the fact is, is that everywhere there have been back and forth battlings uh, between people who live next door to each other. Um, you know, for, for as long as there have been around. And that's, you know, so that's nothing really new or particular. But I would agree that the only winner in war is death. And if death were actually a person, death would be doing pretty well um, in all this. And I thought it was clever. I was the one who posted it up there, and that's why I put it there. But, um, you know, I don't know. It seems like the, the best solution in that circumstance is, why don't they just let those give those people some kind of cash payment so that they and let some get some country to to take them on because they they're kind of stuck in a no man's land in these these yeah, people. Yeah, but isn't it holy ter- land we're talking about? Not here? the occupied territories. No? Okay, except for Bethlehem. Well, and that seems. You know, I didn't really want to talk about the Middle East uh, in particular, uh, but that's the thing is that they all think they have to be there because that's where God said to be. And Jerusalem is obviously disputed. I don't think they think that. I think some people think that. Other people don't think that at all. They just don't know where to go. Well, they use that as an excuse. Benjamin, thanks for bringing that up tonight. Appreciate hearing from you at 855-453. You can take control of the airwaves. The toll-free number again, 855-450-3733. Still to come here tonight. Uh, Lauren is going to be telling us about a scary constitutional amendment. It's Free Talk Live. Kid, if something in this facility breaks, bends, or bursts, Granger's got our back. 20 cases of disc springs from Granger.com, new rotary encoder ordered on Granger's mobile app, a dozen splash goggles from the local Granger branch. What more could you want in life? Granger has over 1 million products for all our facility's needs. 1 million. That's a 1 followed by 6 zeros, kid. Everything we need whenever we need it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,326, silver opened at $21.15, and Bitcoin is trading at $610.44. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online, accountableauthority.com. In the news, according to the 2014 version of a report by the Department of Health and Human Services, the most recent data available shows that nearly 25% of Americans received some type of government assistance in 2011. A shocking 38% of children under the age of 5 were welfare recipients that same year. 
The report calculated information dating back to 1993 and defined government assistance as temporary assistance to needy families, supplemental security income, and or food stamps. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office seized the house and car of a 69-year-old widow because her son was caught selling marijuana. Despite her son pleading guilty to possession and sell a pot after officers discovered one pound of the drug in the woman's dining room, the city used the son's actions to initiate civil forfeiture, eventually forcing the woman from her $50,000 home and removing her 1997 Chevy minivan. While home seizures by the city are supposed to be a push to get drug dealers off city streets, some critics argue that fundraising, rather than drugs, is the real reason behind the forfeitures. According to an international group of scientists, climate engineering, or geoengineering, is not capable of reversing climate change trends. In the paper Climate Change Revisited, the scientists investigate whether the use of spraying aerosols into the sky, commonly known as solar radiation management, would be able to curb temperatures and the effects of climate change. The researchers found that although geoengineering the weather could reduce average temperatures, it would not stop the change of the climate. Over the past few years, many scientists and researchers have come forth to speak on the likelihood that geoengineering would actually negatively impact the planet, causing the loss of blue skies and extreme drought for many regions. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. All natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure Water Filtration, the only gravity-driven, all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online at BraveNewBookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The state of Vermont, which recently passed the first GMO food labeling law in the nation, is now allowing the sale of raw milk at farmer's markets, something residents have not seen in at least 60 years. Although it's not without regulation, the initiative called Cottage Food Laws allows farmer's markets to act as a delivery hub. Even though farmers can't sell their own milk, a person who made a purchase through the farmer at the farm or visited the farm at least once will now be able to resell raw milk at farmer's markets. According to a report by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, doctors in America prescribe more opiate pain relievers than anywhere else in the world. The report showed that U.S. physicians wrote 82.5 OPR prescriptions per every 100 persons in the country, or 400,000 daily doses for each million inhabitants per day. Canada is the second leading consumer of OPRs, with 20,000 daily doses per million. As of 2010, 1 million veterans were prescribed OPRs, many by military doctors. Brazil's project to create genetically modified mosquitoes capable of ending potentially fatal illness transmitted by the insects has instead increased incidences of the disease, leading one town to issue an emergency decree. As reported by Sustainable Pulse, without examining the relationship between the mosquito populations and the occurrence of the disease, Brazil gave the green light to release 10 million GM mosquitoes for every 50,000 inhabitants. Experts warn the reduction in mosquitoes doesn't necessarily reduce the incidence of the disease. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal. Affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin. Online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. According to a Stanford University study released Wednesday, there is no logical reason why planes are able to fly. Reiterating that they fully understand the concepts of lift, thrust, and propulsion, lead physicists told reporters they were still unable to reasonably explain how a large 500,000-pound object is capable of staying up in the air without falling. We've come up with several theories, including wind propulsion, some sort of gravity suspension effect, also the possibility that the clouds pull the plane skyward, but... You know, beyond that, 
just don't understand how a large metal tube can just kind of float in the air like that. And it's going at like 500 miles per hour, which means that when I'm on a plane, I'm also going 500 miles per hour? I mean, that's crazy. I mean, why is my hair blowing back and forth? The Stanford team added they plan to devote the next two years to a new study on why telephones can hear. In other news, an urban planner is stuck in traffic of his own design, and a kid screams behind a passenger during an entire plane crash. Visit theonion.com slash newsbeat for more. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the second hour of this program. You, of course, can take control of the airwaves. Dial in toll-free, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, it is Ian here. And Lauren, Objectivist Girl. And Mark. And you can join us on the phones or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. That's where we'll find Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. Hello, Michael. Hi, Ian. How's your brain? <laughs> All is well. What's going on? Good. Uh, a really short call. I'm just calling to pimp the new audiobook of Davi Barker's book, Authoritarian Sociopathy, voiced by Free Talk Live's Daryl Perry. Did a great job oh, doing cool. an audiobook of this. Yeah. And it's uh there's a torrent magnet link of it that I put up. You can go to the Freedom Fiends blog, it's the top post. It will be for a few days. And uh we have 58 cedars on that now, Sweet. thanks to the Freedom Fiends pack of cedars, but we'd like to get it a lot more. You can't so be droned to- now. No, nah, it's drone proof, man, and it's about why people want to use drones and uh how how power corrupts and makes people obey. It's kind of an update on those studies they did in the 60s. You know the ones? The Milgram experiments? Yeah. So wait, yeah. where is this link to the torrent? Freedomfeeds.com slash blog. Ah, is the top link. blog. Okay, very good. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll take that link and I'll put it over on our Facebook and stuff, and then maybe more people will pick it up from there. Cool. If you want to use the link to the direct post, that'd be best. All right, very good. Because I may, I may post other things on this blog at some point in the future. Cool, man. I like the uh, the new header graphic over there at Freedom Fiends. It's got you <laughs> with uh, all these other people in the in the your, yeah, all your co-hosts. It's, it's my gang. It's my Fiends gang. Very cool. They were uh, all all thirteen of them were there except for two. Uh, couldn't make it. I'm not even going to mention who didn't make it because they didn't make it at Porkfest. They don't count. <laughs> Ooh, zing! All right, man. Anything else you want to share tonight? Nope. Thank you for your service, all of you. Thanks for the call, Michael W. Dean. Appreciate hearing from him. As always, Freedom Fiends, great uh, great talk show, doing uh, a lot of what Free Talk Live uh, did in the early days, calling radio stations, getting on stations, the uh, the second show to take the ideas of liberty to the national airwaves. So uh, kudos to... All the ideas of liberty. Every one of every talk show out there has some of the ideas of liberty, right? Um, They just don't have them sort of in a principled fashion. So uh, Lauren is with us, a.k.a. Objectivist Girl, and uh, you brought something in here to talk, a couple of things to, that you brought in to talk about tonight. One of them is a story about a proposed constitutional amendment. What about it? Yeah, so the Democrat, the it, the article is called uh, Senate Judiciary Committee's Backs Constitutional Amendment to Restrict Free Speech. And where is it from? Uh, it's from Reason.com, okay. so I consider it to be very legitimate. Um, The Democratic-controlled Senate Judiciary Committee gives its stamp of approval today to a proposed constitutional amendment that would effectively strip the First Amendment of any power to stop federal and state lawmakers from imposing campaign finance restrictions. And then at the bottom, it says, because I don't want to share the entire thing, I think it's blocked. So they will will strip the power to stop restrictions, meaning that... This will, if it were to go through, would allow all manner of different campaign finance restrictions. Now, when they yes. say, yeah, when they say speech and campaign finance, it always uh, ha- raises my hackles because what they what they mean and when they say speech, when they talk about campaign finance, it's is political that, speech. Yeah, they, they well, they mean money. Um, they they believe that uh, corporations um, are persons, that right. are persons, and the only way that corporations, since they're pieces of paper can speak is if the people that run the corporations, which are pieces of paper, can then give money to campaigns. Like it just, it, It's this sort of convoluted thing, and it, I, you know, I don't think that corporations are people, and I don't think that uh, money is speech. Mm. 
well, you aren't in charge, Mark. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so they're going to keep doing what they're going to do. Well, I think but, as long as we have um, we have government, we need the right to um, be able to find to back our political candidates the way that we choose. Yeah, I think so. And uh, but I mean, I guess my problem is with uh, you know, I think that businesses should be able to back candidates. I guess um, if we're going to have candidates, but. Um, you know, the problem is, is with corporations, in fact, and then and once you get into this realm, you know, they, they, they keep on digging the rabbit hole deeper. This is weird when they say that corporations are people and that money is speech. Well, they've been saying that for years. I mean, the, the decision about the what was it? The Citizens United, I yeah. think that's just the most recent iteration of corporations being uh, yeah. being people. It just it got more attention, I think, this time than it ever had in the yep, past. Got a lot of legs. People are rightfully upset about it. I think the idea that corporations are people or persons is ridiculous, but the whole corporate ideal in the first place is ridiculous. So, you know, corporations are essentially a protection uh, protection scheme for the wealthy. I mean, that's basically what a corporation is. Anybody can get a corporation. It's now. true. It's relatively inexpensive. It's just kind of complicated. It's not even that complicated. I mean, there are websites like keepyourassets.net that'll do all the groundwork for you. Uh, you just yeah, but pay them. It's sort of complicated living that way, running things through corporations. It takes and more stuff. time in a lot of ways, yeah. Now, Mark and Ian, do you think that um, they have all these restrictions to keep people like you and me out of office? Or do you think it's honestly for the betterment? Wait, are, are you talking about campaign finance restrictions? Yeah. Well, well we're only talking, so this article is only talking about restricting companies from donating right Right, but if companies wanted to back people like you and me mm -hmm. um are these restrictions in place so that um the smaller companies really don't have the ability or the time or the effort to support um no i don't think so better i think the, candidates i think the restrictions are in place because it looks good politically um there we you know these politicians in dc or the state level or wherever we're talking about they're not going to shun their buddies in corporate America. They're going to make it look like, on one hand, they care about restricting campaign funds. we got to get these campaigns under control. There's way <laughs> too much money in politics, and I support campaign finance reform. Vote that's, for me. And that's, that's a great voice, Ian. It's the standard kind of political line is that there's too much money in politics. Something must be done. But it's being spat out every four years or every two years or whenever the right. elections Obama are. Obama sort of ran on this. I'm, you know, I'm the non-lobbyist, non-corporate candidate, yeah. and it turns out he's the you know, biggest lobbyist, biggest corporate and candidate. He took oh, they money. always say the opposite of what they actually are. Sure. And, and of course, Obama took money from uh, the big banks, just like John McCain took money from the big banks. Uh, or whoever it was. Who was it that they ran against They can't win him? if they don't. <laughs> Mitt the, Romney. <laughs> the system's uh, so corrupted at this point that there's just, there's no way they could even do it. I, I, me, I question every law that comes out around this. To me, this article is just another reason to end the political circus. Oh, I mean, that's it is happen. just mm -hmm. a big circus that they put on every mm -hmm. two, Agreed. four, or six years that they just, all these... Lights, cameras, action, and well, it's just fake. It's I don't know phony. Who, it's BS. I totally agree. And I don't know who has originally said this, but I love it. They called politics Hollywood for ugly people. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. And these, these, I mean, you've seen Obama. You've seen um, how he's become a celebrity. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no, it's no surprise to me that this is going on. But it doesn't matter anymore we just need to end this circus we need to be done with this yeah, well how do you do that though i mean besides getting massive amounts of people to ignore the state completely well we need how to, would you do that we need a philosophical renaissance as i've said every time i come on this show it's so um, difficult though i mean it's it's one of these things like here here's the thing that i know i know that in 2016 there's going to be another liar and thief sworn in into the white house would you agree yeah. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, you know, people want to participate in that. But people got to, I mean, it's got to be like that movie. I want you to get mad. <laughs> I want you to go to your window and say, I'm not going to take this anymore. But I'm they mad are, as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. They're saying that already. I mean, the, what Congress no, has. No, they like, are taking it. They're taking it. They're no, just putting up with it. They, they, Congress has like a 9% approval rating. People. But yet see they them, still vote. Yep, People still go sure out and still vote. has nothing to do with it. <laughs> they still watch the boob tube and watch if, these horrible. If half the people voted. 
that if half the people that chose that vote la- voted last time chose not to vote this time, would it make a difference? It wouldn't make the least bit of difference. They just wouldn't vote. They need to get up. I mean, people need to get up and yell. Yelling, yelling might do something, but I just think that people, you know, the Occupy people yelled. I don't think. I think the and system's wrapped it's so tight. It's not just this. vocal yelling. It's like philosophical yelling. I love the idea of a philosophical things. renaissance. I mean, let's have it happen. I mean, we're certainly doing our Watch part here. Watch right? girl. Right. All right. <laughs> Toll free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Of course, the Free State Project might be a good solution to foment something like that. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now, introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want. Just dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. By the way, Rich Paul is out of jail. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's, I put that in the, uh, the Facebook feed. You did put it on the Facebook feed, but we haven't mentioned it on the air yet. So breaking news as of uh, around 5 o'clock this afternoon, Rich Paul has been set free on bail. It's a, it was He's, a little bit of a surprise, though. Yeah, I have to say I was surprised by this. Um, I, I guess we should do a quick rundown here, and then we can talk more about a philosophical renaissance. Um, we'll give you the latest on that here in a moment. And, Lauren, we can hear you eating that chili, and it's not fair because our listeners can't get any. Um, and so it's really not fair to eat chili on the air. Uh, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can get a free pound of coffee there, though. 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica and shade-grown as well. It's competitively priced with other high-end coffees. And they do something that other coffee producers just don't seem to care about, which is they've set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. Now, Free Talk Live is looking to attempt, uh, we're hoping to get you on board with this. Every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com can finance one micro loan through World Vision, which is the other thing that they're doing that's special over at BuzzBox Coffee, is they're helping people in tough parts of the world in poverty to make a better life for themselves. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You get a pound of coffee free just by paying the shipping cost. You can cancel your subscription at any time if for some reason that's what you want to do. Uh, coffee.freetalklive.com. Com, and every 10 listeners that signs up, that funds one micro loan through World, World Vision. Very cool stuff. Coffee.freetalklive.com. So the breaking news, a uh, friend of the show, Rich Paul, he is out of jail for the moment. Hopefully for good, but that has yet to be seen. So just to recap the story for those of you who are new to the show, just tuning in, Rich Paul is a liberty activist, moved to New Hampshire, as the three of us have done as part of the Free State Project which you can learn more about at freestateproject.org, uh, the idea of to move 20,000 liberty-oriented activists all to the same place. Anyway, Rich's form of activism is usually cannabis-related. He was selling some cannabis uh, at one point in his life, got busted for that, and then decided to not take the plea deal and throw a wrench into the, the system, so to speak, throw himself into the gears of the system to try for jury nullification. Ultimately, he didn't get it. Uh, unfortunately, the, the jury did convict him of this and uh, jury nullification is a whole other issue it's something that we need to, to work on quite a bit here but we've got a better chance to do it here in new hampshire than anywhere else because of uh, the jury nullification law here in new hampshire that actually allows it to be discussed in court so anyway rich didn't win in court he got found guilty and ended up going to jail for a, about a year he ended up getting out after nine months of that year due to a two-thirds good time rule Maybe it was eight months. Anyway, he got out after most of the year sitting in jail and then, of course, was put on the dreaded probation. Now, probation is set up to make sure you fail. I mean, it's almost a guarantee that you're going to fail probation at some point. There are so many rules that are placed upon you that are so easy to violate. Uh, in some cases, your roommates could violate the rules, and if the cops come in, and find you know a beer in the fridge under certain probation rules, you'll be the one who gets uh, convicted of violation of probation. If That's you not what happened probation. here. <laughs> That's not what happened here, but I'm just giving you an example of how easy it is to violate. In Rich's case, they brought him multiple violations of his probation after an incident happened in Keene Central Square where Rich was uh, preparing to defend himself and others from an attack by people who were uh, very, very angry at uh, at some of the folks that Rich was with, he was out in Central Square. They were doing some chalking that evening, and the voices escalated into yelling, which escalated into threats, uh, threats on the part of the anti-chalkers, not on Rich Rich's part. Rich did not threaten anybody. But what he did do, allegedly, was he took uh, his monopod from his video camera and held it at the ready in order to defend himself from some oncoming attackers. Now, the attackers ended up not attacking Rich. He kind of you know, backed away as they were coming up. They did attack another man who was in the park uh, at that time. But Rich had grabbed this monopod to defend himself. He never swung it at anyone. He never menaced anyone with it. He only grabbed it after it was apparent that there were men coming over to attack him. But that didn't stop them from violating his probation, claiming that Rich had a weapon and no weapons allowed during probation. Also, Rich has allegedly not passed uh, drug screens, urine analysis. That has happened a few times since he was released, so they brought that up as an issue. And now, today, they added on an additional charge. And the additional charge is that Rich has either engaged in disorderly conduct or riot 
Now, apparently, they're not sure which one he's engaged in, but they're going to go ahead and bring that fifth charge they would have charged him. him with it if they were sure. Right, for the violation of probation. So because they brought that fifth charge in in the last minute, they literally brought it in within 20, uh, 48 hours, Rich's defense attorney, who is a public defender, said, look, we got to continue this case. We haven't even had time to look at this new charge yet. So he put in a motion to continue while this, the uh, the prosecution put in the motion to for the judge to accept this fifth charge. So... Wait, you lose some of your First Amendment rights on probation because that would say that you don't have a right to protest. Wait, what would? Uh, Riot. Well, no, riot isn't uh, defined as a protest. Uh, It depends on how they want to define it. I suppose. We'd have to pull up the legal definition of riot in this particular case. I think it's it's a pretty ridiculous uh, claim that Rich Paul was involved in a riot. Again, the video footage from this event has been in the prosecution's hands for over a month now at this point. And as Rich pointed out, if it took them 30-something days to discover that there was a riot happening on that tape, then it was a pretty quiet riot Mm -hmm. in that case. So um, anyway, so that's the latest. There was a court hearing today where both motions were heard. The judge accepted both motions, one to add the riot slash disorderly conduct to the list of violations of probation. The charge that they have not yet been able to charge him with. Right. Well, these are violations of probation. So he isn't being charged with riot. He's, you know, they're just saying this is a reason why his probation should be revoked and he should be put back in jail. He's a menace to society is the argument of the prosecution. The video is coming. So keep an eye on freekeen.com for the full court hearing today. Okay, so the definition of riot from where? Where are you getting um, this? I'm getting this from the internet definition that comes off first. When what, you what, type what in website, what website? Um, let me see. If what you search website? through Google, it'll just give you a Yeah, it's Yeah, I don't it's, want it's the, the I don't want the regular definition of riot. I want if we're going to define riot, it has to be the legal definition of riot and ideally it should be the one specified in the New Hampshire RSAs because that's what he's dealing with. So in legal in the legal land realm they can redefine words. Okay. So if you read the regular definition of riot, it may or may not mirror the actual legal definition of riot, which could be completely different. Um, so just to continue with what happened in court, Rich is brought into court. Both motions are approved. So the motion for the riot slash disorderly conduct to be added to the list was approved, and at the same time the judge approved the motion to continue. But the interesting thing that happened today, besides all that, was the judge actually granted Rich bail. Now, originally, Rich was denied bail at his first hearing a month ago. The prosecution made it sound like he's this dangerous guy who can't be allowed to be on the streets. He's a menace to society. Now you've got the judge granting him $500 bail, which isn't much bail, mind you, because he could grant $5,000 or $50,000 bail. So five hundred dollars bail. That was, you know, took us less than an hour to uh, cobble that together and and get him out. But when they uh, granted this bail, it was interesting because the judge, the statement that the judge made was essentially that because they're adding this extra charge and Rich has already been in jail this amount of time, he's going to go ahead and grant him bail. It sounds to me like if the judge really thought Rich was a menace to society, he shouldn't have granted bail at all and that the judge is willing to grant $500 bail suggests that maybe the judge is considering time served as a penalty on this because the judge sounds to me like the judge did not want Rich to continue sitting in jail on this. I don't know. That's pure speculation on my part. I also didn't think he was going to get out today, and he's out. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airways. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. 
if you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555 5012. When someone says, Good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, Oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, Good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day to day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Most people think you have to seek out a God for finding meaning in life, but really meaning comes from your awareness yeah. that your next move will have a consequence to you, whether good or bad. The meaning is created by the, the person having the experience. It's inside the experience, you. Sir. Your awareness that your next move will have a consequence for your positive or negative view of the world. Mm. And That's I, where all meaning comes from. And I fully believe that it's your interpretation of your experiences, how you decide to act as a result of the circumstances that surround you that uh, will ultimately decide your fate here as far as you know will you have a pleasant experience or will it be right. a hellacious one i believe that i believe heaven in heaven and, and hell but i believe that they exist right every now. moment like you right can now. choose heaven and hell yeah. and the people that do bad things experience hell because doing bad things results in bad stuff but you can always choose otherwise you can begin at any sure. moment sure. to start over Sinners again can be redeemed free talk live seven nights a week from seven to ten eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the website, freetalklive.com. We're giving away some hardcover books. How's that? Well, um, it's through a text con contest, and actually I've posted it up on uh, Free Talk Live's Facebook page. I'm gonna, oh, good. I'm going to pin it to the top. We're gonna have to, I'm going to have to hunt it down and pin it. Um, Ian, okay. can you do that while I'm doing uh, this? I'll see if I can do this? that. Yeah. Thanks. So it's uh, 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies. And uh, Rescue Mode by Ben Bova. So uh, well, the one 1636 is by uh, Eric Flint. And they're, you know, nice hardcover books from Bain Publishing. You can get in the contest, go through next week. All you have to do is text, um, you know, different keywords to our number. And our number is six, uh, 366 Nine four eight, and uh, the is that one, always going to be our number for yes. these uh, contests? Yes, I wish it okay. said something, but that's what I got three six six nine four eight. Got it. And you got to text uh, sixteen thirty six and rescue to those numbers. So uh, good luck to you. It's going to be at the Facebook page. You can go there and find it at facebook.freetalklive.com to enter to win. And there will be five winners of each book. So, um, and there are two separate contests. Very exciting. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Uh, by the way, there's uh, apparently an update on the Ross Ulbricht case. We can give that to you here in a bit. 
Oh, yes. We are talking about Riot and Rich Paul, our uh, our friend who is out of jail uh, for the time being. His next hearing is going to be the 24th of July, so not a very long time between uh, the continuation and the, the next hearing. This will be the full... Uh, hearing and it's expected to take several hours. Apparently, they're going to call multiple witnesses. This is going to be a big deal. Like your average violation of probation hearing, which we saw three of them today, prior to the Rich Paul one. So bam, we were, bam, bam. Yeah, we were supposed to. Well, now it's a little. It's still a little lengthy because uh, at a violation of probation hearing, the uh, probation side, the prosecution, they present their case. You know, kind of the the evidence that they have briefly. Up, uh, what do they call that? Uh, I'm, I'm spacing on what that's called, but uh, an offer of proof, I think that's what it's called. They present their offer of proof, which means they don't actually have to present real evidence. They can just make claims about what happened. And then the defense, you know, makes their claim. But usually they've already come to an agreement. Usually both prosecution and defense have come to an agreement prior to the hearing saying that, oh, yeah, such and such, this person will take the plea deal and go back to jail. And that's what all three of the people who were ahead of Rich Paul did. They all took the plea they, uh, you know, plead guilty on violation of probation, and all of them went back to jail. You know, even though these guys are, by all indicators, trying to make a better life for themselves. One of them was a heroin addict who I actually was in jail with. He was my roomie uh, in jail. He was there in, in court today, a VOP, going back to jail. At least one of the good things for that guy was that uh, probation was ended. So as soon as he's finished with this jail sentence... He won't be on probation after he gets off. But that's what most people do is they take the plea deal. Rich Paul is not taking the plea. He is going uh, to trial on this violation of probation. Now, I believe it's preponderance of the evidence for VOP, so it's not the same as a regular criminal charge, meaning that the level of uh, evidence necessary to get a conviction is not the same as, like in criminal court, it's uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, meaning that you have to grant the person the reasonable doubt that they didn't commit the action in this case, it's whoever's evidence is most persuasive is what will be used as the uh, the indicator as to whether or not he's guilty. So odds are good he's going to get found guilty of multiple charges in this case. The question or, is, what is the punishment? Yes, and that's what's really up in the air here. Now, Rich believes and his attorney believes they're going to be able to beat the weapons charge because, again, he was just trying to defend himself. He was not the aggressor in that case. Right. And, you know, he didn't he didn't hit anybody or threaten anybody. Sounds like he'll be able to beat any riot charge. I think he's going to beat the riot charge. That's really weak. Disorderly conduct. I'm not sure what they're going to try to hit him with on disorderly conduct. But the thing he's not going to be able to beat is cannabis. Uh, He did continue smoking cannabis outside of court. He has admitted to that. He admitted it to his uh, probation officer. And I think he thought he was going to get away with it because when he told the probation officer he'd been smoking cannabis, he figured he was going to get arrested right then. Like, if you know, if this guy is going to do something about it, it'll happen right then. Right. But it didn't. Instead, it showed up as one of the myriad of reasons why he should be VOP'd on this list of VOPs. Sounds like they were waiting for reasons to gather. Yeah, I think you're right. They were so definitely they can gathering hit him with a case. larger charge. Absolutely. So the questions are: Will he be? Will some of these things be beaten? Will the weapons charge be beaten? Will the other charges be beaten? Uh, and if those things are beaten, then what will be the 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 typical what's a typical punishment for a violation of probation with uh, with a urine test, basically. So we, no, I don't know. I don't know what typical is, but they'll know. do whatever he's, they want. He's he's been sitting in jail now for over a month, so he's got thirty days plus time served at this point. When he goes to trial, what I hope happens is that if he's found guilty of violation of probation, that the sentence will be time served and he'll be let go at that point. So mm-hmm. that's that's what I'm crossing my fingers for and hoping for. Uh, and I have to say, I was surprised today. I didn't think he was going to be granted bail. And I didn't think the bail, if he was granted bail, would be $500. So he's out, and hopefully we'll get an update uh, directly from him as time goes on. But right now, he is not allowed to be outside. One of his terms of uh, bail is a curfew. Uh, he is not allowed to be outdoors. He's He has to be in his home from 8 p.m. at night until 6 a.m. in the morning. So at this time... Uh, It's Eastern time, past 8 p.m. He is currently at home. And uh, the judge also said if he gets a one urine analysis that tests dirty, that bail will be revoked and he will go back to jail. So I know Rich is interested in kind of coming at things from a a medical marijuana perspective. He had told the judge in his original case that he uses marijuana to fight off depression, that for him, marijuana is a medical necessity. And now here in New Hampshire, there's a medical marijuana law. Now, I don't know if depression is one of the issues that is approved of 
for this medical marijuana law. I haven't read it. It's like, you know, 26 pages long or something like that. But uh, it would be an interesting approach for Rich to say, hey, I know I should be able to use medical cannabis, even though the system doesn't ha- like they passed this law last year or was it 2012? Anyway, they passed this law recently and it's taken really? them this long period of time in New Hampshire to hash out all the details, you know, which bureaucracy is going to handle this and what are the rules going to be and how are we going to open up these uh, compassion clinics and where are they going to be located? And they've got to deal with all this stuff. What are the cards going to say? They've got to hammer out all this, you know, detail. People, suffering people can't be given relief. We've got paperwork to do. So basically the soonest you'll be able to go into as a sick person with AIDS or cancer or something like that looking for pot. 2015, right? The soonest you'll be able to get in is like 2015, 2016, depending on where and when and you know, all this stuff still They've up only in the air. decided to put together three dispensaries in the entire four, state. Four. four for the entire state of New yeah, Hampshire. Yeah, that's not very bad. That's not very much. And if you can't get to a dispensary or you don't have somebody who can get to a dispensary for you, well, too bad. You can't grow at home. Uh, because in order to pass the medical marijuana here in New Hampshire, the governor demanded that home grow be removed from it. So sick people cannot grow their own medicine. They're going to have to go to the government approved stores, the government run stores, from what I understand. Uh, to to get their medicine, and you so. know it'll be weak, not almost. I don't know. I hope not, Lauren. I really hope not. I think they're going to have independent people running the stores, but they're like government I kind hope of you're stores. Right, Ian. I really do. We'll find out. It's it's one of the weakest medical marijuana packages out there. Hopefully, it can we'll always s- be strengthened now right. that it's been passed. Yeah, hopefully we'll see it improved. Uh, if Maggie Hassan, the governor here, doesn't make it through to a, a second term, that uh, really, what do you think is going to stop that from happening? I'm running against her. <laughs> oh God! I don't really think I have a chance. I'm I'm running against her in the Democratic primary. Yeah. Actually, I, all those I Democrats. Lo- I loved the laughter. I loved watching you two look at each other and just like this maniacal laugh. <laughs> maniacal laugh. Right. Well, so great. If if so Ian great. wins the governorship, I will eat this shoe. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be fun. I can't even possibly win it. I, don't, I mean, even if I won it, I don't think I could take the office because I can't swear an oath to the state. Okay. If Ian takes the Ooh. governorship, actually if I can get through the into oath, the office, yeah. I'll eat the shoe. <laughs> I, I think you'd be all right to just if he got voted. <laughs> you know what? If he wins, I'll eat one shoe. And then if the you other take one. the office and swear the oath. <laughs> And go to work the first day, I'll eat the second. Has anyone ever tried to eat a shoe? It sounds like it'd be really uncomfortable. And it can't be particularly good for you. How do you how do you just get a piece off of the shoe? I have never eaten teeth. a shoe and I don't expect to eat one anytime soon. That would hurt your teeth. I wouldn't want you to eat a shoe, Mark. That would be Gosh. gross. You could eat some crow. How about some crow? But how Ooh. are we gonna find a crow? Jim I don't crow? Know. A little- <laughs> Toll free numbers. Stale donut. 855, 450 free. Uh, you can take control here. The latest on Ross Ulbricht coming up. Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with LSProtection.com. 
That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the morning roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the morning roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You know, I'd heard that uh, Ghostbusters was going to be making a sequel, a, no- a new sequel, and apparently they still are planning to do that in 2015. But they're re-releasing Ghostbusters, the original, uh, at the end of August. I was just surfing around during the break and saw that, and uh, that's a fun movie. I might go see that in the Who theaters. are you going to call? Exactly. My friends to go watch it with me. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. I was only four when the original uh, Ghostbusters came out, and so cool opportunity to go and you know reintroduce Ghostbusters to... A new generation. A lot of people, including myself, are feeling pretty old right now if you were only four when <laughs> Ghostbusters came out. I wasn't even alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, I, I just saw thought it in I'd the theaters, that. and it was pretty good. I'm going to find yeah, the trailer. all y'all are old. I'll put, I'll put the trailer for uh, the Ghostbusters re-release, and it is, by the way, Mark, Mark remastered, you know, for 2014. Did they remaster? Good that doesn't because- mean they're redoing the effects. It's still the, the same old classic effects. They just remastered the video itself. Anyway, oh, so cool stuff. Cool. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything. The latest on Ross Ulbricht here in moments. Corey is with us in Savannah. Corey, uh, you're on Skype. Hello there. Hi. Hey. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, how long do you think I would be in prison if I committed 11 counts of manslaughter and pleaded guilty to it? It depends. Are you a cop or not? <laughs> No, I'm not a cop. Okay, then probably a long time. Yeah, I'm going to say, let's see, 11 counts of manslaughter. Um, and involuntary ple- manslaughter. What's that? Uh, involuntary manslaughter uh, caused by reckless behavior. Okay, I'm going to guess, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you got 10 years per count, and they could run those counts concurrent or consecutive, depending on the level of uh, sort of acclaim in the um, uh, for the case. But let's go ahead and be generous and say uh, ten is, is 11, 11 10 year concurrent sentences. So ten years. So One hundred and ten years. No, so, I, uh, uh, concurrent. He said concurrent. Yeah, concurrent. Oh, concurrent. I'm just going to be oh. generous, and, uh, generous to the legal system, which I don't believe in, uh, and go ahead and say ten years. Ten years. 
Okay. Well, um, a couple of years ago when BP turned the Gulf of Mexico into a toxic waste dump um, and killed 11 people through their criminal negligence, they pled, they pled guilty to 11 counts of involuntary manslaughter. Mm. Uh, as a corporation, they pled, pled guilty because the corporation itself was charged. And they locked that file folder right up in a jail cell. Uh, yeah, I guess so. That's, no, that's I doubt the, it. I'm, I pretty much just called the show just one example of the inconsistencies. Well, what did um, they do? What, what was the punishment for uh, BP in that case? There wasn't one. A fine. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean other than the money. Civil, there, was, there were civil was cases, money. but the government made its money off of the deal. If, if um, a corporation yes. must speak through money, then apparently it does time through money, hmm. too. So why, why couldn't I pay to get out of my jail sentences? Exactly. That's the question. If, if personhood uh, is, is the same for me as it should be for a corporation, then it would seem to me that there should be some severe restrictions on what uh, BP is able to do for at least 10 years after the BP oil, oil spill. Well, maybe you the know? file folder is in jail. It's just got, uh, you know, its employees are just running it um, while it's away. Quite possibly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they also charged some of the site managers uh, with criminal charges. Mm. Um, that was just to get their fine. But if a corporate, if they're saying um, a corporation has personhood, charging those individuals for... Uh, the crime, is, as well as the corporate person for the crime, that's kind of like charging my hand for the crime and then ch charging me for the crime as well. I don't you know if I agree with that. Um, so, I mean, if, if I, I've got a corporation um, and we have some trucks, I have people who drive my trucks. If an employee gets into an automobile accident, I am liable as a corporation for whatever damages that might be done. And usually if I'm a wealthy the corporation, corporation liable. you're not liable. Well, right. The, the, well, the corporation that I own, even if it's an S corporation is, is liable. Well, case. The, um, um, but if the employee decides that he wants to run somebody over intentionally, say an ex wife or ex boyfriend or whatever, uh, with, with one of my trucks, that employee can be charged criminally, so it's possible for them to do something criminal in my vehicle. Yes, and I, know, I understand that, but there's just so many inconsistencies oh, yeah. in this idea of corporate personhood um, that if people really actually stop to think about it, people would just be so incredibly displeased. Well, further um, on your point... Um, if they can pay to get out of jail, then the argument is if those corporations can pay to, pay to get out of jail, then rich people can get out of jail. But that's not even a valid argument because these celebrities with a ton of money aren't going to jail for as long as they should be either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, but money already does buy people out of jail. It does. Uh, right. It allows people to, um, buy lawyers, you know, the constitution, that, that little piece of paper, or several pieces of paper, um, you know, it it provides it provides for the right to uh, representation, but it doesn't provide any way for it to be paid for. You know, um, so in a system where you have a private legal system uh, and private lawyers, um, you don't get the same defense uh, overall. You know, you can buy better defense in our system, and it seems like it might be set up that way. Yeah, that's why we now, need— I'm not saying that we need publicly funded defense, um, but I'm saying uh, something else needs to be worked out because what's happening is not working. Well, what we need is equality and authority. That's just it, is that the laws mean? are totally different uh, for certain people, and people get out of them and other such things. Um, when you have equality and authority, that doesn't happen. And the only way that we can have equality and authority is through not having a state. Um, when people pay industries to take care of their rights and defend their rights, people can expect what they pay for. And therefore, we're all going to have equality and authority as soon as the market is able to meet that demand. Well, I don't even like the idea of authority, period. I think that it's a terrible idea. The idea that people would somehow 
that, that, that you could, if you, first of all, I don't have the ability to tell you what to do, Lauren. No. Um, you don't have the ability to tell me what to do. You and I don't have authority over one and another. I'm certainly not going to pay anybody to have authority over me. Well, and well, I can't grant, it. I can't grant to you something I don't have, right? right? I can't give you authority over me because I don't have that to give to you in the first place. But that's just it. We would pay these corporations to mediate between parties, and that's mm-hmm. technically a authority and that's what i'm referring to when i talk about it's authority. okay to consent to have someone make a decision right between two parties i don't that's, know if that's the classic that's definition of authority no 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 this is totally different i mean you got to remember i'm an objectivist we have completely different different definitions for just about everything so yeah i mean authority <laughs> is the power or right to give orders make decisions and enforce obedience so <sighs> yeah know, enforce ahead. obedience exactly so um we're just kind of like vulcans we've got our own definition Corey, go ahead. Any other uh, thoughts you want to share? Yeah, that, that. But when you for, are forcing obedience, that's a contract not only between you and the mediator, but between you and any other party that might use the same mediation service. So it's a it's a trade off in in forcing obedience. You know, both people at the same time are uh, required to obey whatever the mediator says. It's actually a contract between two people with a mm. private mediator. You exactly. do have authority over your own life, right? You have authority yeah. over your Absolutely. own decisions. I just don't believe in external authority. Except for authority. those things in which you've decided a contract with a business to take care of. Or with another person. You're sure. welcome. Anybody is always welcome at any time to give their authority over their own life to someone else. But I, but, I encourage you to do that wisely. Yeah. And an, another example of, of corporate personhood going awry is the recent Hobby Lobby decision. Now, I don't believe that Anyone should be forced to do anything that they don't want to do, um, but just the inconsistencies of Hobby Lobby getting an out on that compared. I mean, I don't get to, um, I don't get to disregard laws that are made. You know, there's supposed to be some sort of equality under the law, um, and if the government requires me to pay taxes, then I pay pay taxes. Um, because but I'm being forced to. In the case of the Hobby Lobby one, I mean, if the government passes a law and you say that I have a, a my religion exempts me from this law, you have the right to take that to court. And Hobby Lobby simply did that. Well, there's uh, been right? On the books for What's that? freedom of conscience for a long time. What's that? I'm sorry? Freedom of conscience. Right. You know, um, being a conscientious objective. I, I, there's a lot of things that I, I conscientiously object to. Same I'm here. Not, I'm with you, Corey. I consciously and consciously object. <laughs> well, right. Shouldn't Good people be you. able to? Con- shouldn't a company be able to object well, oh, to sure. following they the law? Be. That's called pulling we your money from come them. Come back with more here in moments on Free Talk Live. Hour three next. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,342 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $614. Antiwar.com reports, The Pentagon describes Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria as a person of great interest to us, which in Pentagon speak means they'd really like to lob some missiles at him. That's unsurprising because firing missiles at people is kind of their thing. But coming up with a pretext for a drone assassination against Baghdadi when he is not fighting against the US and the US is not officially in the new Iraq war yet isn't easy. The problem is twofold as not only ISIS is not fighting the US anywhere right now, but it is fighting two Shiite nations, Iraq and Syria, and assassinating their leader could spark a backlash against the US from Sunni nations that see the U.S. taking sides in the sectarian war. The argument right now is that ISIS might conceivably be a threat to the U.S. Embassy of Baghdad if the city falls to them. That's kind of a flimsy argument. And, if anything, attempted killings could bring the U.S. more directly into the war and make them a much more appealing target for ISIS than they already are. Still, with the Obama administration escalating the U.S. role in Iraq at any rate, the question of direct involvement may soon be academic. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a state judge struck down Colorado's gay marriage ban on Wednesday, saying the prohibition violated constitutional rights, but put his ruling on hold pending appeal. It was the latest of several decisions by state and federal judges to strike down state bans on same-sex nuptials and then stay their rulings pending challenges to higher courts. Adams County District Judge C. Scott Crabtree said in his decision that Colorado's prohibition approved by voters in 2006 conflicted with the fundamental right to marry. Crabtree wrote, The court rejects the state's attempt to too narrowly describe the marital right at issue to the right to marry a person of the same sex. There are 19 states plus the District of Columbia where same-sex marriage is now legal. Several other same-sex marriage lawsuits are moving towards the U.S. Supreme Court. Two other lawsuits testing bans in Oklahoma and Virginia have already been heard by appeals courts. The Attorney General of neighboring Utah said on Wednesday he would appeal directly to the U.S. Supreme Court, a ruling by a federal appeals court last month that backed gay marriage there. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Israel continues to escalate airstrikes against the Gaza Strip, with officials reporting 400 strikes in the last 48 hours, and the attacks leaving at least 49 dead and over 450 others wounded. 
The split between Hamas fighters and civilians remains unclear in the chaos of the Gaza attacks, but at least 12 children have been confirmed killed on Wednesday. Most of the missiles hit residential areas, destroying over 50 homes and damaging over 1,700 others. That's just the beginning, according to Israeli officials, who bragged about hitting more targets in 48 hours than they did in the whole week-long November 2012 clash. Outgoing President Shimon Peres confirmed an imminent ground invasion as Israel continues to mass troops and tanks along the Gaza border, saying it will happen quite soon and that it's the logical conclusion to the current conflict with Hamas. Arab nations are pushing for an emergency UN Security Council meeting to try to secure a ceasefire, though with the United States praising the Israeli onslaught, it seems likely that any UN measures to stop the fighting will come only after Israel has tired itself of pounding the tiny strip. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. An area man doesn't know what to do with all the extra ketchup packets. This is Doyle Redland reporting. After finishing his Big Bacon Classic combo, Erie, Pennsylvania resident and Wendy's patron Don Turnby, 38, expressed uncertainty today regarding what to do with all the extra ketchup packets. Turnby had asked for extra ketchup upon placing his order for a ketchup necessitating Biggie Fries. Well, I knew it was too many ketchups because I usually only need three or four for my biggie fries, but I just took them anyway. At his nearby home, the Turnby Pantry is crammed with hundreds of other restaurant condiments, including single-serving packets of Taco Bell mild sauce, Arby's horsey sauce, soy sauce, McDonald's chicken McNuggets hot mustard sauce, pats of shed spread country crock from Ponderosa Steakhouse, and a selection of Smucker's jellies and jams from several area diners. Oil Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can take control of the airwaves as we launch into the third hour of the program. The number is toll-free and brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and create the content. Right there on the front page of our website, you can post whatever you want. A link to a news article, blog post, YouTube video. Whatever you'd like to put up there, and then other listeners can vote up or down as to whether or not they like or dislike what you have posted. So go and get interactive for free at freetalklive.com. Still to come, the latest on Ross Ulbricht, the man accused of being the operator of the Silk Road, an underground drug marketplace uh, on the black market. The Dread Pirate Roberts. As he was alleged, well, he is alleged to be the Dread Pirate Roberts, who was the operator of the Silk Road. We'll give you the latest on his case. We've got Corey on the line in Savannah. I wanted to hang on to him there through the news break. He had called in about the idea of corporate personhood and had said that uh, the Hobby Lobby decision was disturbing to him. And I wanted to know more about where you're coming from on that, Corey, because, and I have to say, despite all the attention Hobby Lobby got in on talk radio, we really didn't cover it, if much at all, here on Free Talk Live. No. Um, my understanding of what I heard about the, the case was that this company... They are religiously oriented, and they have an objection to having their health care plans pay for birth control, and they were able to opt out of that from the court decision. Isn't that correct? That is correct, um, and part of the ruling was based on the fact that there's so many holes in the Affordable Care Act um, that, the, that, that, that there's already options that have been made available to uh, religious organizations and religious nonprofits to um, – get women those health care options. And, um, and, and Hobby Lobby was also covering some forms of contraception. It's just that some that they found objectionable, sort huh. of like the a la the um, at day after pill or whatever. Well, could I also, as a religious objection, object as a company owner uh, to having health care whatsoever for my employees? I think that there's probably a reasonable argument for that, yeah. but um, that's not what this, uh, this, this was about. Um, but I would think that there'd be a reasonable argument that Perhaps the Amish, who don't participate in Social Security, mm -hmm. would be able to make this argument or, you know. Well, anybody. I don't want to participate in any federal government, anything. I mean, it's definitely <laughs> against my religion. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you conscientiously object to the things that you're being forced to pay but for. Did I, you, I thought you said you disagreed with the Hobby Lobby decision, Corey. 
Well, I, I agree that no company should be forced to do anything. Okay. That's what I agree with. Um, so, but the, the problem is created by government in the first place when there was a, a mandatory health insurance uh, right. law passed. You know, that was the Affordable Care Act is nothing but a handout to insurance companies. Um, that's to insure insurance corporations. You know, if you look at the, the stock figures for health insurance companies ever since the Affordable Care Act was passed, uh, they have not been hurting at all. They've actually been booming. Mm -hmm. uh, their stocks have, at least. Right. Um, you would think that, uh, you know, if this was bad enough that the company would suffer, but I think that there's probably kind of like the Chick-fil-A incident, um, you know, where <laughs> there are enough people that are, um, you know, on the other side of the issue that the, the company is actually seeing some increase in business, perhaps. Um, I, I think that it's there's a there's a reasonably good argument on the other side that because um, because companies are forced to give health care now, that therefore that health care is now part of an employee's compensation and that an employer shouldn't. You know, it's not th the employer's money that's being put towards uh, health care, but in fact, the employee's money that's being put towards uh, a particular type of uh, you know, birth control. So that isn't the employer's business. I think that's a reasonably good argument. However, you know, we're still talking about force and coercion. I don't think a company should be forced to uh, pay for health care at all for an employee. Well, we're talking about an entire historical accident. Our entire system is based on employer uh, provided health insurance uh, for every, I mean, the, the most, the, the most doctor's appointments, if you go to the CDC website and read, it says there that most doctor's appointments occur because of a, a the symptom of cough. People go to the doctor for cough and that's covered by insurance. Why, if, if I need an oil change in my car, do I use insurance to pay for that oil change? Definitely if, not. If my car is sputtering, do I use insurance? No. It seems to me that insurance is best used and best to have when there's some kind of extreme circumstance when mm -hmm. you will be unable to pay for those services. I believe um, that there was. It started with World War II, I think. With uh, yeah. uh, you know, it might have been actually executive compensation prior to that. Back when they had a ninety percent uh, tax bracket, that um, the you know healthcare could be paid for dollar for dollar, but and in um, you know executives uh, pay would be you know one, a dime for a dollar. So what? they asked for all kinds of benefits, and then these benefits would trickle down over time. There were uh, uh, employee pay caps during World War II. I don't know why, but, you know, they were there. And then at that time, essentially the way to get better employees, because employer, employers are constantly battling for better employees with other employers, so they have to compete. And one of the ways to compete is to offer more benefits. Exactly. So, so they, uh, because there was a cap on wages and they couldn't give people money that they could get their own benefits, they offered the benefits. And so you have this whole, like when you say it's an accident of history, it truly is an accident of history. Why in the world do Democrats want to be peons to their employers. I mean, that's what it is. It's peonism. If you don't believe me, look it up. Yeah. Oh, I, I certainly agree. Um, it also, I mean, there was also a very competitive labor market. I mean, the fact that all of Europe was destroyed and the mm -hmm. U.S. was pro providing most goods created a very, very competitive labor market. So employers began offering extra benefits and started competing in that way to bring workers in. That's what happens in a free market, you see. Yeah, um, but I think that... It, <laughs> we don't uh have that. I think that uh, benefits are probably more uh, cost effective for employers because of taxation, more cost effective for employers to uh, give than, um, you know, or at least they were at the time, than uh, pay because you can give dollar for dollar on benefits. And even now with, uh, you know, the pay brackets the way they are, you're still giving um, six dimes for every dollar on in pay. But I, ultimately, I wanted to go back to what um, Ian said earlier. Corporations are a creation of government. Uh, and of the wealthy, for government and for the wealthy, and to protect the wealthy. Um, that's what they always have been since the establishment of the East India Trading Company. Um, it was They were created to limit the liability of the shareholders and to give a monopoly to uh, the company, you know, over certain uh, areas. Corey, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Vince is in Indy. Vince, you're on Free Talk Live. 
Hello, Ian and Mark. And I haven't talked to you guys in a long while. But, hey, Vince. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, I've been listening to some of the media here uh, outside of you, but uh, I don't know what you think of the protests that the people showed up against. The, I mean, even the legal immigration of some of these young kids from Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador, you know, and how the United States basically has organized those people to come back into this country. And I'm confused. Are, are, are you talking the, about some immigration protests? Yeah, the immigration protests, especially the one down in Southern California. Are these protests are pro-immigration or anti-immigration? Uh, I would consider them anti-immigration, but okay. I so, guess, you know, some of the pro-immigration people first. So what's the too, issue? What, so. is, what is the concern or the issue? Well, there's well, a lot of kids. There were protests because there were, you know, physical confrontations. Mm -hmm. The government has stopped bringing in, in those people, in those processing centers. I just want to know what you think. What I think about what? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Well, there's protests the protest. going on. What I think about the protests? The protests? I don't know anything yeah. about them. I support people's right to protest, though. Well, and, I, and I support people's oh, okay. right to go work places where they're going to make more money. And if there's arbitrary, funny lines drawn on maps, that uh, those those lines uh, shouldn't prevent people from living a better life for themselves. Vince, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll-free number, I agree with your perspe perspective there. Uh, immigration, you shouldn't have to ask some bureaucrat's permission to come to a place that's allegedly, ostensibly a free country. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. But if you are going to protest, you should not be violent about it. Uh, no one should be bringing violence to a protest, including the police. It's free talk live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. L L C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crisis. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. If you are struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813. 800-215-6813. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up anything that's on your mind here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. A lot of news about Bitcoins. Um, it just keeps on rolling in. But there's, uh, you know, there's a website where you can now buy passports for bitcoins there's lots of reasons why you might want a second passport or even to renounce your citizenship last year was an all-time record high for people renouncing their u.s citizenship but people are doing it all around the world whether it's a government intrusion on your privacy or a protest against uh, foreign policy of your nation or to protect your wealth or avoid pointless regulations onerous taxation or perhaps as some kind of refuge you may want to get a second passport or change your citizenship. Check it out the uh, St. Kitts program at passportsforbitcoin.com. I was looking into the St. Pitt Kitts program, and actually, um, if you do go with their um, to renounce your citizenship, they don't advise your home country. So mm-hmm. you can become sort of a dual citizen mm. in uh, St. Kitts. I thought that was interesting um, that they just don't bother. Well, if you're renouncing, you wouldn't be a dual citizen. You're talking about getting an extra citizenship? Well, that's essentially what you would be doing. I mean, gotcha. you know, you wouldn't – they don't advise your home country. You may if you wish. I see. So at that point, you could, you know, change your citizenship over or you'd have a second citizenship. Now, how is this different than becoming a freeman? I don't know what a freeman is. Oh, I've okay. heard people talk about being citizenless, you know, stateless. Yes. But um, – That's freeman. Yeah, that's unlikely. Um, I have yet to see any government say that that's cool. Whereas- Actually, the British government is letting them do it. Who? There is a woman online that I asked to be on my show that I really want to have on that cool. did it. Tell so- us more about that because uh, I want to know what she, exactly she did. Yeah, we, I don't know all the details. We know details. about Mike Golgolsky who renounced citizenship. He burned up a, piece, a bunch of government pieces of paper that had his name on it. Oh, no. Uh- she got some paper signed. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Well, anyway, this is for folks who value the idea of having a passport, because if you renounce, you don't get a passport, and that can make world travel kind of Very difficult. Passportsforbitcoin.com. Check it out when you get a chance here. I'm actually pouring over the 51-page order and opinion by judge, uh, the judge who's at the head of the uh, district court of... Uh, that is presiding over the Ross Ulbricht case. Those of you who've been listening to the show for the last year, actually the last three years, uh, you know about the Silk Road. The Silk Road is the underground drug and fun marketplace where you can buy all manner of uh, interesting products that you can't find at Amazon and eBay or Target or Walmart. And uh, there are some legal products available on the Silk Road as well. But Ross Ulbricht and is a man. Really, sort of disreputable stuff, too. Like uh, they had some credit card numbers uh, at one point I saw mm, yeah. for sale. Yeah, so I don't like that much. 
Yeah, well, it is kind of an underground marketplace where almost anything can be sold. And it was shut down in the end of 2013. In October of 2013, Ross Ulbricht was arrested and charged with being the operator of the Silk Road, a.k.a. Dread Pirate Roberts. Now, he has yet to go to trial on this case. In fact, I'm not sure exactly when it's scheduled for. I think it's later this year. Um, but the attorney that has uh, his family's brought on board, and by the way, you can support Ross by going to freeross.org and contributing there, the attorney has filed a motion to dismiss, and the government has denied it. According to the story at Wired.com, here is the update. The government and legal community may still be arguing over whether Bitcoin can be defined as money, but the judge presided over the presiding over the landmark Silk Road drug case has declared that it's at least close enough to get you locked up for money laundering. In a ruling released on Wednesday, Judge Catherine Forrest denied a motion by Ross Ulbricht's lawyer, the 30-year-old alleged creator of the Silk Road billion-dollar online drug bazaar, to dismiss all criminal charges against him, including narcotics trafficking conspiracy, money laundering, and hacking conspiracy charges, as well as a continuing criminal enterprise charge that's better known as the Kingpin Statute, used to prosecute criminal gang and cartel leaders. That earlier motion filed in April raised potentially trial-shifting questions. Can Ulbricht really be accused of running a drug-selling conspiracy when he merely ran a website that made the narcotic sales possible? And can he be charged with money laundering when Bitcoin doesn't necessarily meet the requisite definition of money? Well, I think that what's important about... Um you know what we need to consider is is that Silk Road wasn't isn't a snapshot in time. It is uh, it occurred over a period of time. And he in Russ Albrecht, it's difficult to know whether he was the original creator or whether he was um, another iteration of Dread Pirate Roberts. Um, so or or if he was that at all. And uh, you know if if we're talking about Bitcoin as money, the Silk Road was created I think in 2011. It was yes. And so Bitcoin wasn't even wasn't even no one had said bitcoin was money at all at that point uh so it's kind of it's yeah, but everybody s- knows bitcoin's money i mean it transacts like money it, it acts like they money. call it a currency it's people treat it money. like money no it is more money than what they are calling money yeah, is sure. nowadays uh there are several criteria that i think ayn rand's definition of money is definitely my favorite and definitely the most concrete. So her definition of money uh, says that it must be imperishable, which U.S. currency is not. Uh, You can burn it very easily, as I proved in my video. And um, Bitcoin can't be destroyed. It can be lost, but it can't be destroyed. Um, If the entire Internet shut down, Bitcoin would be destroyed. Mm, yes, but that's not going to happen. How really imperishable is really the question. It's, right. And um, the argument can be made that if the internet ever came back, that Bitcoin would be back. Okay, Ian, you're always going to come up with one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so well, it's gold also, can be melted. I mean... The next criteria is rare, and we know U.S. currency is not rare, and Bitcoin only has 12 million, or no, 21 million that can ever be created. That's right, yeah. And so, and there's 13 million right now, so, I mean... After that, it stops. No more Bitcoin. And then um, homogenous, and both are homogenous technically, so, you know, they both meet that criteria. Easily stored. Um, Obviously, Bitcoin is extremely easily stored. I mean, it's it's on a phone. It takes up no space other than the space in your phone in your pocket. It's easily Um, stored, easily transported. Money. I mean, if you get enough of it, it's really hard to fit in your wallet. Well, they're trying to make it harder and harder too. I mean, consider when I was a kid, they had $100 bills and it was the highest Mm -hmm. form of cash. I am uh, 43, you know, They used to have $500 bills. They had $1,000 bills. 30 years later, they still have $100 bills. Now, you, you, I mean, I think it would be pretty inarguable that... uh, you know, the, the cost of things has gone up 10 times right. from mm-hmm. when I was a kid, but the value of the currency hasn't. They're trying to make U.S. dollars or the, p- the pieces of paper uh, obsolete, but what they're doing at the same time is making it irrelevant. Yeah. And so the next two are it's not subject to wide fluctuations of value. I mean... Don't even get me started on how much the U.S. currency has fluctuated. I mean, I believe yeah, but the that Bitcoin's it's gone fluctuating up. fluctuating pretty heavily. Okay, but Bitcoin, that, that's what I'll address next. But but money, um, or I'm sorry, U.S. currency, which I don't deem as money, I'm not calling it money anymore, has gone up 80%. Since our parents' generation. That's ridiculous. 
Um, also, um, Bitcoin, yeah, it's obviously subject to wide fluctuations, but it's going to even out as businesses start taking it and it's taken more seriously. And now more businesses than ever. Dish Network announcing later this year they're going to be accepting Bitcoin. Hustler.com now accepting Bitcoin and even Dogecoin and Litecoin. They're giving uh, out life memberships. The only way you can get it is with a Bitcoin. <laughs> right. They've never had life memberships before. Now they're doing that with uh, with Bitcoin. We'll continue here. And it's interesting. The courts are saying Bitcoin's money the IRS is saying it's property. More coming up. Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Toll free here at 855-450 free. More on the Dread Pirate Roberts case. Here in moments, the judge shutting down a, a motion to dismiss all charges, uh, shutting down all of the motion, you know, the, the entire motion. Nothing succeeded with that. And we'll continue with the latest on that case here in moments. Also, want to let you know about modup.net. If you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check into Modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about modafinil from modup.net. It's making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. They provide only the highest premium modafinil at modup.net with the highest potency, so you enjoy significant results, and that's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So check out modup.net, and when you order, if you pay with Bitcoin, you'll get a 33% discount to make the deal even better. Use code FTL at checkout, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So, again, don't forget code FTL at ModUp, M-O-D-U-P, ModUp.net. Check into it for yourself. You'll find that ModUp.net offers world-class service at a great price. And don't forget code FTL at ModUp.net to get those 10 free tablets. So, Ian, is that like what Adderall is? It's like a safer alternative to Adderall? Because I know a lot of college students use Adderall to try and stay awake for tests as i understand it it is i had one listener tell me about uh his experience while i was at pork fest and he was raving about it he he said that uh he was more uh i forget the exact word that he used to describe it i don't know if alert's the right word but uh, he he was more tuned into you know getting things done without feeling like he was buzzing (laughs) or high or something like that interesting so he felt more productive with it without you know the kind of adderall speedy feeling i guess that's nice. Yeah. So there you go. Check it out at modup.net. Let's continue here. We'll go back to oh, Ross Ulbricht and the latest in that case here in a moment. Dennis is on the line in Gainesville, Florida. You're on Free Talk Live, Dennis. Hello, Dennis. Hi, guys. Hey, you're on the air. I want to, I want to chime in. Thank you. Um, yes. I wanted to chime in on the uh, the border situation. All right. um, I, know you, I know you guys think, for some reason, I, I truly believe you think we live in some kind of utopic free society. And we, you know, you realize we don't. We're very controlled and very manipulated and very under the thumb of the powers that should not be. Yep. And I'm off. And in that, in that situation, that'd be great. I mean, open, bo- open borders, free this, free that, no rules. I'm all for that. But we don't have that. So are you for contributing $4 billion to facilitate um, immigrants to come into the country to get on welfare and to get on the uh, school system and, and for everything to be paid for? I mean, No, why would I for? support yeah. government uh, redistribution programs like that? I can't speak I, for Ian or Mark, but I'll tell you that we shouldn't put any money towards that. Um, but I do think that it's ridiculous that we have borders. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't pay federal taxes, so I'm not contributing anything towards anything the federal government does. And I think that everybody else who cares about freedom should stop doing that as well. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But... But to um, disregard the situation, though, I mean, how do you how do you rectify the situation? What's well, the situation? People coming here, here to I make mean, a better life for themselves? Because, you know, you got two kinds of people who might come here and might immigrate here. One would be a, someone looking for a handout. Two would be the majority of immigrants I've ever met, the ones who want to make a better life and are willing to work hard at doing that. Um, you know, let those people come here and they shouldn't have to beg anybody's permission, fill out forms, pay thousands of dollars, wait tens of, you know, dozens of years in order to get here. It's crazy. It's a crazy yeah. system. I, I mean, think we have a welfare problem, not an immigration problem. Right. That's what I was going to say. Dennis? Yeah, we do have a welfare problem. We have, we, but they facilitate, I mean, we have a government that facilitates that to create a dependent society. Is the and government. We, we become completely. Is the government Go ahead, more sorry. your fault or more the immigrants' fault? Now, I'm not saying it's your it's fault. It's our fault. We the, tolerate it. We tolerate it. It's definitely our fault. Then it's not yes. some poor person that's just trying to come over here and make a better life for themselves. I don't blame them. <laughs> I'm not blaming them at all. Right. Well, I don't I mean, blame them at all. I, uh, 
You either let people come I here. If I were them, I'd be coming here too. Right. right. You either right. let people come here and you know make a better life for themselves, or there's some sort of crazy enforcement apparatus which will make us all less free. I know which one I choose. Yeah. Me too. I just think this illegal, corrupt government that we have is using them as a, a tool. Sure. As, oh, yeah. You know, as they do many things. That's what governments it's do. Another, <laughs> no, but, no, I mean, and their arsenal is uh, very, very uh, diverse and uh, extremely. Uh, I'm at a loss for words. But yeah. that, that's I'm just why frustrated we... because you guys, you seem to ignore the fact that we are under control. I mean, you, you, you live, I mean, maybe they, maybe in New Hampshire, it is a free, truly free society. I, live, don't, I don't, don't ignore the, uh, that at all. I, I know in, that we're not free. I just was, did a video on that. My friend was just in handcuffs earlier today right. uh, in the government courtroom under total control. So I've been in a jail cell. I'm fully aware that we are under control and that there are a bunch of uh, power sick freaks who want to tell us what to do or force us to do things that we don't want to do and take as much money as they can possibly get away with taking from us i mean i'm fully aware of these things i just don't i you know i'm not going to advocate for more of that and the people that want to control immigration they want more government no there's plenty of violations of the nap here the nap um, being the non-aggression principle yeah how is new hampshire coming along anyway the uh, the free state society it's, it's going beautiful. very well uh we all moved here uh, lauren the most recent of the <laughs> the hosts in the studio when did you move about a year ago yeah i moved uh august 1st will be my one year i'm wow, planning on exciting. having i know i'm planning on having a party at the queue so uh, movers are great we have a um what what i call a libertarian veto in the new hampshire house there are 80 members that's 20 percent of the new hampshire house the largest legislative body of any of the states um and 80 of those members are nominal libertarians as rated by the new hampshire liberty alliance and those that means that if you want to get your conservative bill or your libertarian or your liberal bill bill through you have to go through a uh you know a, a a small phalanx, but a larger phalanx of libertarians than any other house has. Yeah, it's still not a, tr a total veto, Mark. I mean, there's still some bad legislation that gets through, like the gas Hold tax. On. Wait, 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 dum-dum. Don't you know what a veto is? Bad legislation can get over a veto. You just need enough people to do it. It's a veto, my friend. I, I, I think once we get enough people here, we're going to be able to not only uh, keep prevent bad legislation from getting in, but also repeal some of the legislation mm -hmm. that is currently in. I think there will be, I mean, there are a ton of free staters about to run for office. So I'm I've heard at least excited. three dozen. I don't know. That was an early number, too. So I've, Yeah. Yeah. So we actually have people getting elected, uh, Dennis. We've had some pro-freedom stuff pass through the, the state house and, you know, medical marijuana finally went through last year. So we're starting to see some progress here, and, and really the Free State Project hasn't but, even made its official move yet. We've only had early movers coming so far, and the official move doesn't happen until we reach 20,000 participants. So we, we're barely even getting started well, The here. progress isn't about the bills that get passed, Ian. It's ridiculous to think that we would have enough people um, you know, moving at this point, early point. Well, when you Hampshire. say libertarian veto, it makes it sound like we can just veto any bad legislation that comes through. It's not that. Not yet. It's not happening yet. I said yet. <laughs> that you have to go through a phalanx of libertarians in yeah. order to get your bill through. There, twenty percent of the house is a no are nominal libertarians. That's a huge upgrade from any. Check the other 49 states. They haven't got crap oh, like that. Nobody's elected as a libertarian anywhere. Their, Actually, their governments are growing at uh, breakneck speeds. Uh, the funny part is that our libertarian party here is so extremely small. Oh, it's But weak. it's completely unnecessary yeah. because we pretty much have the Republican Party. The libertarians are getting elected. Liberty-minded people are getting elected as Republicans and Democrats here in New Hampshire. And yeah. libertarians just don't get elected anywhere else outside of New Hampshire. So here is the place where liberty actually has a chance where we can actually see freedom on the rise. And yeah, there are a lot of bad bills that do get stopped. Every now and then a bad one will go through. Yeah. But a good example of a bad bill that got stopped this last year was the uh, the one that was going to make New Hampshire one of the other 49 or 50 states that has license plate scanners being used by police. That one got shot down. And New Hampshire, I believe, is the only state that does not have that now. Uh, and we, don't, we will continue to not have it. Dennis, I hope that answers your question. Check out freestateproject.org when you get a chance. Appreciate hearing from you tonight because I escaped from Florida, as did Mark, and I'm not looking back. Uh, this is great up here. More coming back here in moments. You can take control in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live next. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. 
but the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for your call, your thoughts about whatever's on your mind. You just dial in toll free at 855 450 free, and we put you on the radio. 855 450 3733. Uh, that number brought to you by Pro XPN. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy all kinds of features. Uh, all of them are totally free. Keenvention's coming up October 31st through November 2nd. It'll actually be here before you know it, about four months away uh, at this point from the other convention in New Hampshire. You've heard about the Liberty Forum. We broadcast live from Liberty Forum, uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, another great event in New Hampshire every single year. And now fall has a convention as of last year we kicked off keenvention it's uh it's a bit of a different event it's smaller 
It's more intimate, as I like to say. And I didn't know how it was going to work out last year. I really didn't know what to expect. And I was really pleased and surprised with how uh, great of a group we attracted to the event and how interesting the panels were. People were raving about the event and, yep. and how useful and, and fun it was. So you can come up to Keene. You can check out the area, explore New Hampshire a little bit. More importantly, meet the doers. Meet your future neighbors. Meet the activists, the people who care about freedom, who've made the move already in order to speak at Keene. You, anybody can attend Keene Pension. You can go and get the tickets right now for just 40 bucks or the Bitcoin equivalent of $40 at keenvention.info. So anybody can attend. But if you're speaking at Keenevention, you have to be a New Hampshire-based activist. So none of these fancy big-name speakers coming in from anywhere else in the, the world. No, only people from, you know, living here in New Hampshire, activists from New Hampshire. Those are the people I want talking at Keenevention because they're the ones who have the experience. They're the ones with their boots on the ground, whether it's in the state house or whether it's, you know, doing civil disobedience. We'll cover all of those topics. Uh, technical, we had a great tech panel last year. In fact, if you missed it last year, just go to Keenevention.info and you can watch all of the videos. Every single panel discussion, every speech, uh, JJ's awesome speech that he just did off the cuff and really brought the house down. Uh, Carla Garrick, uh, she spoke there, the president of the Free State Project, and we had so many great panels. It's all there free at Keenevention.info. Go and see what you missed and then get signed up for this year. Uh, Pre-sale tickets are limited to only 100, so go get your tickets while you still can. The price is going to go up. Probably at some point this weekend when I get around to raising it. That's pretty much the only reason it hasn't happened yet. So go and grab your $40 uh, early bird price while it's still available at Keenvention.info. It's again October 31st through November 2nd right here in beautiful Keene, New Hampshire. Do you still have speaking spots open? You know, I haven't nailed all that down yet, uh, Lauren. In oh. fact, I'm actually trying to figure out who's going to be the speakers and who's going to be, you know, heading up panels and things like that. It's one of the myriad of things on oh, my list. Well, of you should get a hold of me, Ian. Well, I will. I appreciate you throwing <laughs> your name uh, into the hat. Awesome. I, I want to get back into the news here about Ross Ulbricht because we've just barely told you the beginning of the update on the story here, and that's from Wired.com. A motion was filed in April that uh, basically asked for all the charges to be dismissed against Ross. Ross is the man who's accused of running the Silk Road, which is an underground drug marketplace available on tour. Silk Road's back online, by the way. It came back on about a month after it was taken down by the federal government, and it's now called Silk Road 2.0, being operated by more anonymous people who are apparently not Ross Ulbricht. So they didn't stop Silk Road. They only stopped it for four weeks, and now it's back, and there are three or four other sites that are just like it uh, that are competing with Silk Road. So if anything, they spread underground drug markets further by taking out the Silk Road, by essentially spawning competitors in the absence of the Silk Road. Competition breeds efficiency. The earlier motion was filed in April, raised uh, pretty in, uh, serious trial-shifting questions like, can Ulbricht be accused of running a drug-selling conspiracy when he merely ran a website that uh, made the narcotic sales possible? And can he be charged with money laundering when Bitcoin doesn't necessarily meet the requisite definition of money? According to the ruling by the judge... Yes and yes. She rejected every argument made in the defense's motion, starting with the idea that Ulbricht had merely provided an innocent platform for hosting the Silk Road's illicit e-commerce, just as eBay might occasionally host illegal content without its knowledge. Silk Road was specifically and intentionally designed, said the judge in her 51-page order, for the purpose of facilitating unlawful transactions. Ulbricht is alleged to have knowingly and intentionally constructed and operated an expansive black market for selling and purchasing narcotics and malicious software and for laundering money. This separates Ulbricht's alleged conduct from the mass of others whose websites may, without their planning or expectation, be used for unlawful purposes. Ulbricht's lawyer Joshua Dreidel had made the argument that, if anything, the Silk Road should be covered instead by a law known as the Crack House Statute. The 1986 law was created to hold landlords accountable for knowingly owning a property where drug deals were taking place. Dreidel argued that the more serious narcotics charges, in Ulb if those charges applied in Ulbricht's case, there would be no need for the landlord-focused law. But Forrest countered, in her opinion, that Ulbricht is accused of being more than a disinterested landlord. By allegedly designing the Silk Road to use tools like the an anonymity software Tor and the potentially tough-to-trace Bitcoin, she argues that he had invited drug dealers onto the property. Ulbricht's alleged conduct, she says, is more akin to a builder who designs a house complete with secret entrances and exits and specially designed traps to stash drugs and money, she writes. This is not an ordinary dwelling, but a drug dealer's dream house. 
unquote. She went on to note Ulbricht is accused of working to organize and command and control of the Silk Road's operations and also took a commission from its profits, all the kind of behavior that would make him an active participant. The allegations, she says, quote, amount to Ulbricht acting as sort of a godfather, determining the territory, the actions which may be undertaken, and the commissions he will retain, disciplining others to stay in line and generally casting himself as a leader and not a service provider. Just an interruption here to this story from Wired.com. Is this going to be a jury trial? Because this judge, I don't think, uh, is going to be very fair to Ross Ulbricht. She doesn't sound sound like like she's uh, really disinterested, right? Yeah. By far the most closely followed argument in Ulbricht's April defense motion, however, had been its contention that Bitcoin users can't be accused of money laundering because Bitcoin isn't money. The motion cited (laughs) statements about Bitcoin by the IRS and FinCEN uh, that described it as neither funds nor a monetary instrument. They just screwed themselves on that one, didn't they? Who? Um... Not with not being able to accuse them of of money laundering, because I'm sure the government would love to get their hands on a few of the more fluently using Bitcoin users. Well, she's so. uh, saying that it is money. So the argument of the attorney oh, okay. was that it wasn't money. So therefore, money laundering charges shouldn't apply. Right. So they the kind of screwed themselves. Wait, who screwed whose self? I'm sorry, Ross and his attorney or the government? No, the government. No, they haven't screwed themselves because no. they can do whatever they want to do. So the oh, government can hold true. the government can hold two separate opinions about Bitcoin and just pick whichever one is convenient. So you've yeah, got yeah, they do that with everything, don't they? Right. You've got the IRS saying it is money. FinCEN, excuse me, the IRS is saying it's property. FinCEN says it's money. Another federal co- government judge has said it was money, and now this judge is saying it's money. So they can just do whatever convenient. they want. The two terms of uh, so again they are saying that it wasn't funds or a monetary instrument, which are the two terms used in the money laundering statutes. In fact, the IRS has instead described Bitcoin as property for tax purposes. But the judge tossed out that argument as well. She points out in her opinion that neither the IRS nor FinCEN have the power to define money laundering laws, and she said it was easily clear enough that the Bitcoin had function as money in the Silk Road's dealings since sellers using Silk Road are not alleged to have given their narcotics and malicious software away for free. They're alleged to have sold them. The money laundering statute is broad enough to encompass use of Bitcoins in financial transactions. Any other reading would, in light of Bitcoin's sole raison d'etre, be nonsensical. The rejection of Ulbricht's motion could have rippled effects beyond the Silk Road case. Former Bitcoin Foundation Vice Chairman Charlie Schrem was also arrested last January and charged with Bitcoin money laundering, and his trial is still pending. Projects like Darkcoin or Dark Wallet that seek to enable the anonymous use of cryptocurrency could find themselves on thinner ice at uh, as that the limits of Bitcoin on thinner ice as that the limits of Bitcoin's legal anonymity have become clearer. So there's the latest on the Ulbricht case. Let's go to your phone calls. Your thoughts, certainly welcome. We'll keep you in the loop with Ross Ulbricht, by the way. You want to help him out, fund his defense, go to freeross.org. It's a pretty important case. We go to Not Wit, calling from Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live on the Amp Lines. Lady and gentlemen, uh, have a good evening, and uh, thank you for taking my call. Welcome, sir. Um, I, I wasn't going to call about the Ross Albert case, but I did want to take this opportunity to remind everybody to go to freeross.org, and uh, even even the smallest amount helps. Uh, send some Bitcoin tips, uh, some some change his way, and uh, let's do everything we can to to help out our friend uh, behind bars. Excellent. Um, but. The main reason I called, um, you guys are like family to me. Uh, I listen to the show almost every day and Aww, uh, listen thanks. to the podcast That's when so I can. Sweet. But I did want to ask, so uh, as friends and family, I, uh, I like to get to know uh, my friends and family a little bit. And I'm wondering, what, uh, what music do you listen to? What, uh, do you have an all-time favorite artist or a band that you listen to? <laughs> Lauren is actually a musician. I presume to? she listens to some of her own music. Yeah, I, I actually write and sing my own music. I... Um, I have a song called Shrug that you can find on my channel. Where's your channel? Uh, My channel is is, uh, YouTube.com slash Objectivist Girl, but there's no I in the girl, just so you know. Somebody already had that. Now, aren't you coming out with an album? I am. So in September, hopefully it'll be out, but it looks like we're going to have to push it back a little bit further. I've been listening to K-pop recently uh, for a minute. I love them. Mark? I always look for the uh, the soft AC station in town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and baby metal. Because I'm living in a powder keg and giving off sparks. Oh baby metal. Goodness. I love the baby metal. <laughs> Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, Not Wit. And we are out of time for tonight, but we'll be back tomorrow. You can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Bye, guys. According to locals waiting for a 66 bus in downtown Chicago last night, a young couple was making out in the passenger shelter like they were in... 
in Paris or something. Onlookers spoke to reporters about the pair, who carried on their passionate embrace for over 20 minutes, as if they were in some sort of goddamn candlelit bistro tucked away in Montmartre. It's been almost a half an hour and they're still going at it. It's like they think they're sitting on a sun-dappled picnic blanket in the Tuileries Gardens. I mean, where the hell are we? The Sean Zelizay? The Paris Marathon makeout session, which took place in downtown Chicago and not, as frustrated onlookers emphasized, on a cobblestone street in the city of f***ing lights, featured intense gazing, deep tongue kissing, and other gestures of affection typically reserved for a couple strolling down the banks of the Seine River. You know, for a second there, I honestly thought we had all been transported to Parc Monceau drinking flutes of champagne on a wonderful summer afternoon while being serenaded by a Parisian accordion player. But no, we're at a bus stop in f***ing Chicago. This is the Onion News Network. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, July 10th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.51 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,342 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $614. Antiwar.com reports, the Pentagon describes Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria as a person of great interest to us, which in Pentagon speak means they'd really like to lob some missiles at him. That's unsurprising because firing missiles at people is kind of their thing, but coming up with a pretext for a drone assassination against Baghdadi when he is not fighting against the US and the US is not officially in the new Iraq war yet isn't easy. The problem is twofold, as not only ISIS is not fighting the U.S. anywhere right now, but it is fighting two Shiite nations, Iraq and Syria, and assassinating their leader could spark a backlash against the U.S. from Sunni nations that see the U.S. taking sides in the sectarian war. The argument right now is that ISIS might conceivably be a threat to the U.S. Embassy of Baghdad if the city falls to them. That's kind of a flimsy argument. And, if anything, attempted killings could bring the U.S. more directly into the war and make them a much more appealing target for ISIS than they already are. Still, with the Obama administration escalating the U.S. role in Iraq at any rate, the question of direct involvement may soon be academic. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. I trust Coinbase. You should too. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a state judge struck down Colorado's gay marriage ban on Wednesday, saying the prohibition violated constitutional rights, but put his ruling on hold pending appeal. It was the latest of several decisions by state and federal judges to strike down state bans on same-sex nuptials and then stay their rulings pending challenges to higher courts. 